If you suffer from back or neck pain, injury or headaches, then Dr. Tom Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center are here to help. Dr. Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center have been serving Delaware County residents for over 15 years. They take a gentle approach and utilize current techniques to help manage your pain. To address your back and neck related pain or injuries, call the Advanced Chiropractic Center today at 610-356-2300 or visit drtomgraziano.com and tell them the Tigers Radio Network sent you. Oh man, the Philly Pretzel Factory has done it again. They took a Philly tradition and made it even better. Now you already know the Philly Pretzel Factory has the best soft pretzel. Well now, they're making a cheese steak pretzel. That's right, a Philly cheesesteak on the inside, surrounded by those piping hot, fresh, chewy pretzels. This is as Philly as it gets. A cheesesteak and a pretzel? Incredible! How great are those guys over there? They've got their original pretzels, the cinnamon pretzels, the pretzel dogs, and the party trays. And now, the Philly cheesesteak pretzel. Bring them for tailgating, watching a game with the boys, a barbecue, or even a kid's birthday party. Head over to the Philly Pretzel Factory for the all-new cheesesteak pretzel. And remember, if it's not from the Philly Pretzel Factory, it's not a real pretzel. If you're having plumbing problems, heating problems, cooling problems, don't have an attack, call Bobby Mack. Bob McNamara Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling is located right here in Marple Township for 29 years. You can call Bobby Mack, 610-496-6260, or visit their website for all your heating, cooling, and plumbing needs at bobmcnamaraplumbing.com. The wait is over, Delco. No more driving down to the city in that awful traffic just to get an authentic cheesesteak. Delco Steaks located in Brumel has the best farm fresh meat right from Chambersburg, PA. Their simple menu offers cheesesteaks, chicken cheesesteaks, charbroiled burgers, hot dogs, homemade chicken fingers, and the most delicious thin crinkle cut fries. Call today for delivery or pickup at 610-356-1192 and check out their menu online at DelcoSteaks.com. See why these guys were Philly Magazine's top pick for cheesesteak joints in all Philadelphia. Delco Steaks, you can't beat our meat. Adams Harley Davidson supports Marple Newtown Tigers football. Adams Harley Davidson Media PA, 1011 Baltimore Pike. Adams Harley Davidson Chad's Ford PA, 1241 Baltimore Pike. Adams in Summersville, Pennsylvania, 3255 State Road. Adams in Electric City, Harley Davidson Scranton PA, 1534 Scranton Carbondale Highway. Adams Harley Davidson, Rahway, New Jersey, 12 West Milton Avenue. Demo rides every day. Full events calendar, hours, directions, and contact information. AdamsHD.com. Adam I'm Charlie Davidson. Tiger Pride. If you suffer from back or neck pain, injury or headaches, then Dr. Tom Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center are here to help. Dr. Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center have been serving Delaware County residents for over 15 years. They take a gentle approach and utilize current techniques to help manage your pain. To address your back and neck related pain or injuries, call the Advanced Chiropractic Center today at 610-356-2300 or visit drtomgraziano.com and tell them the Tigers Radio Network sent you. Hey Tigers fans, did you know that only the Philly Pretzel Factory can make the Philadelphia pretzel? Because they have authentic, genuine quality of a Philly pretzel. They're always hot, always fresh, always a great deal. When I go to the Philly Pretzel Factory, I know I'm eating the original Philly soft pretzel. Bring them to a sporting event, a work party, even for a quick snack, and you can be sure that the Philly Pretzel Factory will deliver a pretzel of great taste and value. Stop in today at any of their locations, including Broomall, Springfield, Folsom, and Bryn Mawr. Or visit their website at phillypretzelfactory.com for a complete listing of locations in the Delaware Valley. And remember, if it's not from the Philly Pretzel Factory, it's not a real pretzel. Taking the lead in the tree care today is Mike Gillen at MG Tree. Mike is a resident of Brumal, a 1990 MN graduate, and was co-captain of the football team in 1990. Located in Brumal, MG Tree provides tree care to shaping and trimming or complete tree removal, not to mention a 24-hour emergency service. 
These experienced professionals are serving those in Delaware County and the main line. Keep your trees looking healthy and great. Give them a call for an appointment today at 610-359-9970. Again, 610-359-9970. Hannum's Harley-Davidson supports Marple Newtown Tigers football. Hannum's Harley-Davidson Media PA, 1011 Baltimore Pike. Hannum's Harley-Davidson Chad's Ford PA, 1241 Baltimore Pike. Hannum's in Summersville, Pennsylvania, 3255 State Road. Hannum's Electric City, Harley-Davidson, Scranton, PA, 1834 Scranton Carbondale Highway. Hannum's Harley-Davidson, Rawway, New Jersey, 12 West Milton Avenue. Demo rides every day. Full events calendar, hours, directions, and contact information. AdamsHD.com. Adams Harley Davidson. Tiger Pride. Searching for a reliable heating and air conditioning company? Then DZO Mechanical is here to fulfill your every need. Privately owned, DZO offers residential and commercial services in heating, air conditioning, and ventilation. Since 2000, DZO has proudly served the Delaware County and Tri-State area, offering customers great service at fair rates. For a free estimate, call DZO at 484-454-3346 or online at www.dzomechanical.com. If you love Philadelphia sports and good food, then there's no better place to catch a game than Barnaby's of America in Havertown. Located off the Broomall Havertown exit of the Blue Route, Barnaby's is the place to be for the big game. You can enjoy dinner in their dining room or grab appetizers on the enclosed deck or even head downstairs for a night of dancing and arcade games. You can even book your next event at Barnaby's of America in Havertown and take advantage of their party specials. So for sports, food, and a great experience, stop by Barnaby's of America in Havertown today. Are you thinking of buying or selling your home? If that's the case, call Marple Newtown real estate expert Karen Garbett with the Karen Garbett Real Estate Team. Karen has over 55 star reviews on Zillow. She supports Marple Newtown High School football and goes the extra mile for you. In fact, the $500 donation will be made by her to the football team in your name for anyone who calls Karen and has their home bought or sold with her that goes to settlement. Want a good return on investment? Be sure to give Karen a call at 610-331-4546. The wait is over, Marple. The first bar since Prohibition has opened up in your backyard. Marple Public House, located at 31 North Sprawl Road in Broomall, is home to award-winning dishes, a 16-rotating tap system, top-shelf liquor, and an elegant but fun place to spend time with family and friends. See what all the hype is about. Check them out online at www.marple.pub and be sure to catch the radio crew in there after each Friday night game. Fidato Partners is a regional management consulting advisory and executive search firm with offices in Berwyn, Philadelphia, and New York City. Fidato Partners LLC helps companies navigate the challenges and complexities of today's ever-changing business landscape with expertise in technical accounting, system implementations, internal audit, finance transformation, and data management. We help global businesses solve their most critical finance, accounting, system, personnel, and data issues. Learn more at www.fidatopartners.com or reach out to Patrick McGowan. The Tigers Radio Network broadcasts, both live and archived, are the exclusive property of the Tigers Radio Network Incorporated and are produced for the private use of our listening audience. No rebroadcast, in full or in part, is permitted without the express written consent of the Tigers Radio Network Incorporated. We're 23 to begin this drive for Paoletti. He stands in the pistol. It's going to go to Weathers. He's going to cut it back. He's got a running lane. He's got a one-man miss. He's still on his feet. He's at the 30, 40, 45, 50. He's in the Strathaven territory. Stiff arms the Strathaven Panther. Back pedals. Stays on his feet. That's going to be a 94-yard run. Ryan just going to look to throw. He's going to throw to Fan far side of the field. fan has got to step on his man. He makes the catch. And he's got the touchdown! Touchdown, Joey Pham! It is a high kick. Carmen Cristiano will pick it up to 50. He gets a running start. He's going to bounce off one tackler. He's going to make a move. He's down the sidelines. He is going to find his way into the end zone. He's running near sides, getting hit by Corey Power through the sack. Man, hand off the fallows, cutting it back on the near side, and he is off to the races. 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Tigers. There goes the ghost. Out of the eye, it's a handoff to Sapness. 
He runs down his blocker. Good patience. Across the 30. Across the 40. Across the 50. One man to beat. Across the 35. On his feet. Nearly tripped up. There he goes. Adrian Sapness. Touchdown. Play action. He rolls to his right. He's going to step up. He's going to heave it to the end zone. And it is going to be caught. Caught by Cameron Mathis. It's a hand off the hop, they go off the edge again, he's trying to use his speed, he tries to cut back at the 5, down to the 1, no signal yet, he's across the goal line, touchdown, yeah, there's yeah, the yeah. hop, there's the signal! Play action, Stratton's looking for the end zone, and it's going to be intercepted by Carmen Christiana at the goal line! Let's this one go, and he has a man streaking, touchdown, Riley Feldman! And you're listening to exclusive coverage of the Marple Newtown Tigers on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. Good evening as we welcome you to Newtown Square, Pennsylvania on the campus of Marple Newtown High School for the Tigers home opener. The orange and black take on Central League foe Pancrest in a battle of teams looking to get back on track. After winning the season opener in Ocean City, New Jersey, the Tigers dropped their last two games at Strathaven and Garner Valley. Meanwhile, the Lions are 0-3, looking for their first win of the season. I'm Dave DePasqua alongside Jim Olsman, Eric Kelly, and for the first time on the mic tonight, Playing color will be Charlie DePasqua. Welcome to the broadcast, Charlie, as both these teams will look to pick up a league win for the first time this season. Happy to be here, Dave. Pancrest is looking for their first Central League win after falling to Radnor and last week Conestoga. Meanwhile, Marple's coming in having fallen to Garnet and Strathaven, who aren't only powers in the Central League, but also all of District 1. Now, Charlie. If you're Coach Kicking, you finally no, don't have to see a wing tee anymore. You saw Garnet Valley hammer home a lot of passing, but Strathaven two weeks ago, you saw a heavy dose of Schuler and company. This time, Pankhurst doesn't really want a wing tee. They want more of a power eye, am I correct? Yeah, Dave, they run more of a power eye. Still a lot of running, but not having to worry about all that misdirection. For those folks not really familiar with the power eye, that's going to be more of a traditional quarterback under center, two wide running backs, one behind you with a full back. Now, Marple Newtown, they won't be under center a lot because Bertolini did have a nice game last week. They like to air it out as it is the home opener here as the Tigers looking to try and get that Central League Wayne Bertolini had some nice pop passes looking down the field, but none other. You're going to be looking for Charlie Box, who this season accounts for all Marple Newtown touchdowns with five and 293 yards on the ground. Just as you said, they're going to want to spread them out. If Pencrest has one weakness, it's definitely in the secondary. So they're, you're going to see a lot of five receiver sets, four receiver sets, and look for Bertolini to use his legs when they're all spread out. So the folks familiar with the Tigers, Charlie, are going to know Marple Newtown's going to get the ball to Charlie Box. They're going to look for Eric McKee on the outside. Bertolini might call his own number. But for Pencrest, who are some of the players to keep an eye on? You're going to be looking at Nick Cello, the quarterback. Not only does he throw, he gets about 8, 9, 10 carries a game, along with Mike Burke and Brendan Cowell in the backfield. So are those designed runs, or is it more him taking off? A lot of designed runs. Counters, off tackle. Absolutely. Thank you, Charlie. As you're going to see a heavy dose as we wait for both teams to come out. About five minutes still on the clock. You're in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania for this Central League matchup between the Lions coming from media and the Marple Newtown Tigers. It is an orange out here tonight as if you can see on the field to your right, you see a lot of young ones playing. Eric, it's great to see everybody back here. You know what? It is. Um, it's nothing like getting back to that home opener, even though we're a little delayed this year. I mean, with the third game, fourth game into the season. Well, um, we're they actually did play back. in Ocean City, so that did change a little bit for the opener. You're right, but to be uh, actually back in, uh, in what's the, what's the uh, what's our new stadium? I think we have a new, a new name. NBC Stadium. NBC Stadium. That's, that's amazing. So it's great to be back. Uh, the kids are out having a good time tonight. We got a great night here for football. Pencrest is in the house, and uh, you know what? After the last two weeks, Marple, has, that wing tee has really given Marple a lot of a lot of trouble. So um, something new. So they don't have to face what? the wing tee anymore. Let's let's look for something else tonight, <laughs> and uh, hopefully we won't get quite as banged up tonight either. In the last couple nights, especially last week against Garnet, I know Bertolini um, took some big shots, as did Charlie Box. So hopefully we can get away from this game tonight healthy. And, uh, and move on. And, a week uh, fresh. Yeah, right. That's, uh, let's see what we can do. 
Pancras is coming out. We want to give a shout out to Steve. We know you are listening. He's taking the night off. He is attending a wedding. As Pancras comes out on the field, they are going to be led out by their captains. None other than Charlie already mentioned. Cello. Cage is another guy you're going to have to keep an eye on. He's a wide receiver, a senior as well. They will wear white uniforms with the yellow and red trim. Following them out, Marble Newtown's youngsters as they're fired up to try and get these Tigers out on the field. But, Charlie, you will see a heavy dose of Marple Newtown going after Cello. As you said, they want to run that power eye. They're going to probably make them throw. Yeah, they're going to want to make them throw. And if you stuff those runs on first and second down to get them in obvious passing situations, let your pass rush tee off. So you're talking about pass rush teeing off. So if you're Marple Newtown, you're looking at number seven, Matt Cantwell, to potentially have a big game. He did have a sack to begin the season, but the rushing attack, the wing tee kind of negated those ability to get those sacks. And getting them in obvious passing downs, too. Cantwell's using his height to get all of his arms up. Cantwell listed at 6'4". He's a big boy up front. Expect Bosch as well. He's on the other side. Damian Bosch, another senior. Marple Newtown, some new faces, but their defensive line, Haggerty and company, are going to look to gang tackle and bring down some of these, these running backs for Pencrest and caught. And they got Burks. They have a good mix. They do have a good mix. And on the other side of the ball, Pencrest is going to have to gang tackle as well, having good outside containment, getting boxed down on the ground. Marple Newtown ready to come out on the field. They are wearing all orange as it is. Orange helmet, orange jersey, orange pants. It's an orange out. It's an orange out here for the home opener as the Tigers take the field. Go ahead, Eric. Dave, I believe they have an orange Delco flag as well. So <laughs> I represent. Every, everything is represented tonight here. Except the steak. Except the steak. <laughs> well, Steve, Steve's probably making the steaks right now. So Delco steaks, uh, you can't beat their meat. So I'm sure Steve right now is, is making good use of that. The young kids, the Marple Junior Tigers and company, welcome the Tigers out as they look to take the field. After that, that will be followed by the coin toss. And once after that, it will be played by National Anthem. As it's a nice crowd here for the home opener. Something different. We are back at the stadium. We are not at the command center where we were the last two weeks in Jim's house. As the captains are going to go to the midfield point where you will see the coin toss, Charlie. I am not see, I can't see on the other side, but can can you know off the bat, you've been following Pencrest. You know the captains are for Pencrest? Captains are the quarterback, Nick Cello, Connor McCartney, leader of the line on both sides. Absolutely. Is, is there any other big boys up front that you're, you want to keep an eye on for Pencrest? All right, you already named the two. As Marple Newtown comes out with Foley, McKee, Cantwell, Small, and Charlie Box. Four captains come out for Pancrest. They got the big fellas as well. That's Nick, uh, let's see, we got Jimmy Cage. And number eight. Number, number eight, eight is Zach Puckett. Puckett. Now, if you're Marple Newtown, you might recognize the last name Puckett. He was a principal here at Marple Newtown High School. As Marple Newtown has two of their captains. Pancrest the has won the toss and they have elected to defer. Marple Newtown will receive the ball to start this game. Marple Newtown will go left to right. Next up, the playing in the National Anthem. We will step aside. You are listening to Marple Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. If you suffer from back or neck pain, injury or headaches, then Dr. Tom Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center are here to help. Dr. Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center have been serving Delaware County residents for over 15 years. They take a gentle approach and utilize current techniques to help manage your pain. To address your back and neck related pain or injuries, call the Advanced Chiropractic Center today at 610-356-2300 or visit drtomgraziano.com and tell them the Tigers Radio Network sent you. If you're having plumbing problems, heating problems, cooling problems, don't have an attack, call Bobby Mack. Bob McNamara Plumbing, Heating and Cooling? is located right here in Marple Township for 29 years. You can call Bobby Mack, 610-496-6260, or visit their website for all your heating, cooling, and plumbing needs at bobmcnamaraplumbing.com. 
Taking the lead in the tree care today is Mike Gillen at MG Tree. Mike is a resident of Brumal, a 1990 MN graduate, and was co-captain of the football team in 1990. Located in Brumal, MG Tree provides tree care to shaping and trimming or complete tree removal, not to mention a 24-hour emergency service. These experienced professionals are serving those in Delaware County and the main line. Keep your trees looking healthy and great. Give them a call for an appointment today at 610-359-9970. Again, 610-359-9970. The wait is over, Delco. No more driving down to the city in that awful traffic just to get an authentic cheesesteak. Delco Steaks located in Bruma has the best farm fresh meat right from Chambersburg, PA. Their simple menu offers cheesesteaks, chicken cheesesteaks, charbroiled burgers, hot dogs, homemade chicken fingers, and the most delicious thin crinkle cut fries. Call today for delivery or pickup at 610-356-1192 and check out their menu online at delcosteaks.com. See why these guys were Philly Magazine's top pick for cheesesteak joints in all Philadelphia. Delco Steaks, you can't beat our meat. You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. Welcome to this presentation of Marple Newtown Football here in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. I'm Dave DePasco alongside Eric Kelling, Jim Alsman, and Charlie DePasco on the mic and the call tonight as Marple Newtown will get the ball to begin this one. That's Conroy Box, and on the far side is DeFruccio. Pencrest won the toss, elected to defer, so the Tigers will get the ball to begin this one. Number 12 is kicking this one away for Pencrest, Charlie. That is Cody Woolery. Senior kicker for Pencrest. You have to watch the squib kick as well, potentially. Marble Newtown playing up, and this home opener is underway. It is kicked to the right side of the field, picked up at the 23-yard line by Marple Newtown's number four, Eric McKee. He's brought down at the 40-yard line. That's where this drive will begin. 11.53 here in the first quarter. Charlie, as the sun sets, beautiful Friday night lights. Friday nights are always beautiful, no matter the weather. (laughs) Spoken like a true sports fan. First down and 10, ball spot at the 41-yard line. This drive begins with 11.53 here in the first quarter. Pancrest lining up in a five-man front trying to stack the box. Bertolini under center, hands it off to Charlie Bach, trying to bounce it to the outside, and he is hit behind the line of scrimmage. That's Brennan Cout. Cout fired up. First play goes for a loss of two, back to the 39-yard line. Got to watch for Cout off that edge. He was coming as a blitzing linebacker. Something Marple hasn't seen a lot of playing traditional 4-3 teams. Second down and 11 for Marple Newtown. Bertolini this time comes out four wide receiver shotgun formation. Bertolini looks to his right. That's where he goes and it's immediately dropped by Marple Newtown's wide receiver along the near side. That's small with the drop there. 18 in coverage for Pencrest was right there even if he made the catch. Third and long coming up. Now if you're Marple Newtown, third down and long. I think screen pass, a few other quick hitters, right? Look for that hammer screen the box. Clock stopped at 11-18 here in the first quarter. Pencrest won the toss, elected to defer. See the Tigers offense. Good return by McKee, but third down and 11 for Bertolini and company. Four wide receivers for Bertolini, the sophomore quarterback. Double safety look for Pencrest. Bertolini drops back the pass. Quick toss in the near side, and it dropped. Dro- dropped this it. time by Eric McKee. Two drops, not ideal if you're coach kicking. 18 in coverage again for Pencrest. Right there, right on his hip. So the first carry of the game goes to box. Loss of two, then followed by two drops. Out comes the punting unit. And it looks like number 32 will take the punting duties tonight. That is a change for Marple Newtown. Owen Mathis punting for Marple. We've seen a couple different punters this season. Low snap and it goes past Mathis. He's got to jump on top of it. And he's able to boom it. That is a legit punt. And he just turns around like a baseball player. And that's what he is. He saves the game right there potentially early on. 
Bad snap, rolls all the way back to the 10. He's able to pick it up, kick it, Charlie. If Mathis doesn't get that off, Pancrest has all the momentum. They're starting inside the Tigers' 10 with a chance to punch the ball in. Mathis comes up clutch. Pancrest takes over, 10.58 here on the 28 yard line. First down and 10 for Pancrest. If you're Pancrest, you had a chance. You definitely had a chance, but now you get to try and go the length of the field with your rushing attack. Let's we'll see what Cello has in store. Burke in the backfield. Cello fakes in the play action and incomplete. Incomplete. There were two wide receivers in the area. There's Cage in the area. He's going to get a lot of targets tonight. So. Number three with the pass breakup. They're going to give credit to Mike Schumacher. Second down and 10 here. 10.53 in the first quarter. Already seen a ton of passing. More passing than we expected from both teams. Second down and 10. Cello. Pistol formation. That's Burke in the backfield again. Single set. Three wide receivers. They go to Burke. Handoff goes off the right side. He searches his way down to the 32-yard line. This is what we talked about in pregame, trying to both teams trying to get them in obvious passing situations. Third and six coming up for Pencrest. And is manageable. So Marple Newtown backed up with third down in eleven. If you're Pencrest, you have some options. You can run the football here. You can run the ball. And coach might be tempted to go for it if it's short yardage after seeing what his defense has put on the field. Pistol formation once again. Four wide receivers for him. Burke in the backfield. Now steps up to his right hip. Cello. Drops back the pass. Looks to his right. Throws it to the sideline. Complete first down. Keeps this drive alive. No tackle. No number 22 on the reception. That is Sean O'Donnell, the junior wide receiver. It's a good grab by O'Donnell on the out route. Broke right at the sticks. That's something a lot of receivers don't do. You gotta know the sticks. Gain of eight puts the ball at the 40 yard line. 10 minutes here in the first quarter. Pencrest gets the first first down of the game. Burke goes on his left hip, cello. Hands it off to his tailback. Marple Newtown not fooled. A few Tigers in all on the play. Number 30 most notably, Jimmy Haley. Now, Charlie, that looked like a read option. Something to set up for later? Something they definitely do set up for later. Cello is definitely not shy to pull the ball at any moment. As you said in pregame, that is certainly something they do with quarterback design runs. Not only read options, but you're going to see a lot of counters with a, lead, with a lead blocker, such as the running back, Burke. Loss of one on the play. Second down and 11 trip formation on the near side. Burke goes to the near side. Cello. Looks that way. It's a screen back to the near side of the cage. You had blockers in front of him, but Mathis makes the tackle. You had blockers, but it wasn't fully developed. That's a great job of it by those linebackers. They clearly watch film because Pencrest scored off that last week, off that exact same play. The entire defense went one way, they went the other. So you did say they do swing and slants. They're trying to go in misdirection. Correct, both in the passing and run game. Third down and seven after the four-yard pick up the cage. Cage played quarterback last year for those paying attention. Now he's moved to the wide receiver position. Him and Cello flip-flopped. Cello. Four wide receivers as the crowd comes alive here in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. Orange out for the Tigers' first game. Cello drops back the pass. Steps up in the pocket. Going deep down the field. Has a wide open wide receiver. It was wobbly out of his hands, but it is effective as the first down signal provided by number 18 of Pencrest. He has the first down. And Liam, not call me Happy Gilmore. There's two Gilmores on this team. They both play receiver and are in the secondary. Not to be confused with Hayden Gilmore either. That is now on the 33-yard line of Marple Newtown. Pancrest driving on this first possession for them as there's 8-10 here in the first quarter. Burke goes in motion to the far side. Three wide receivers for Cello. Rolls that way, looking, looking. 
Toss to the outside, intended for number two. That is Kautz incomplete. He's lucky he didn't come up with that ball. He had a lot of green grass in front of him if he came down with it. So, Charlie, you, you have been at the Pankhurst Games the last couple weeks. A lot more passing than the last couple weeks? Definitely a lot more passing. You used to see three, four, five runs at a time. So something new for the Pencrest line. Second down and 10. Ball spot on the 33-yard line. Eight minutes here exactly in the first quarter. Tied at zero, but the Lions are driving. Four wide receivers for Cello. Cello drops back the pass. Calls his own number this time. He is met at the line of scrimmage. That was one of those designed runs we were talking about. Everyone thinks he's dropping back the pass. Quarterback draw was called. And, but they sniffed it out. I believe that was Bosch on the tackle. One yard gain. Third down and nine, but this is what you are talking about earlier. You want to be in third down and manageable. They can still run the ball here, pick up a couple yards, go for it, because I don't think they'd be kicking from this area. No. Bosch, 55 on the tackle. Third down and nine, 720 here in the first quarter. Cello, you got keep an eye on Cage. We'll see if he goes back to him, the senior wide receiver. Three wide receivers for Cello. Look for Gilmore. He's on an island, one on one on the far right side. Time now is a penalty. Delay, Delay game. game, and that is the first penalty of the game, and it is a big one. It pushes third down to nine, the third down and fourteen. That's a huge penalty. That's just something that can happen. You gotta know the play clock. Third down and 14, Eric. Dave, they actually looked confused on what they wanted to do there and it just kind of ran out of time on them. Man to man across the board, safety over the top. Cello, it's a handoff to Cage who looked it. They almost look like they tried to do a Philly special as they tossed it to Cage, throwing it back to Cello, but Marple Newtown right in his face. Didn't have time to develop. Pass rush got there before the play could even develop. They're very lucky that wasn't a turnover as the ball bounced off the back of the intended receiver. Now, Charlie, this is what Steve calls no man's rant. No man's land. You're on the opposing 37-yard line. It's kind of too close to punt, but it is a long way to go. I could see if you in, wanted to pin them. In my opinion, I would punt because even if it's a 20, 30-yard punt, you're pushing them inside their own 15, own 10. But as you can see, Pencrest is going here. Fourth down and 14. Cello drops back the pass, tosses it down the field, intended for his target. Intended for Cage. He didn't even turn around. Turnover on Downs. Marple Newtown takes over 654 here in the first tied at zero. But Charlie, he threw the ball before he was ready. It didn't seem that it just wasn't in rhythm. They had yeah. a good drive going before that penalty. Looked, looked like they were trying to force feed Cage there. One of the receivers he trusts. But having a good defensive coordinator at Marble, they know that's where they want to go. And there's two guys in the area. First down and 10. Ball spotted on the 37-yard line. 6.54 here in the first. Their second drive of this one. Double safety look. Toss to the far side. Charlie Box on the outside. He's able to stay on his feet. Tripped up as he gets down to the 39-yard line. Gain of two. So last week, we've seen a couple of these plays, Charlie, where they're almost tipped off. Matt Schuler two weeks ago read McKee going in motion immediately hit McKee and the ball carry in the backfield but they could use something off of that later on. That's all about watching film. Watching film you know the formations you know who's going where. Blow it up. Second down and eight. 620 here in the first quarter. Burnley goes under center to tail back his box. Handoff goes to Charlie Box on the near side, and he is met at the line of scrimmage, but carries the defender with him near the 44-yard line. Give him five yards on the carry. Now, Charlie, you said get players in space for the Tigers, but they haven't been able to do so yet. No, they haven't. Sean O'Donnell's been over to, all over the field for Pencrest on both offense and defense. Brought down Box that time. Third down, Emmanuel, three, four yards. No, knowing Coach Gicking, this is two down territory, 100%. But nothing would surprise me of Coach Gicking. Bertolini under center. Trying to get him to jump here. Utilize that hard count. 
Handoff goes to Charlie Box on the near side. He finds a crease. There's the stiff arm. Charlie Box in the Pencrest territory. Brought down by Puckett, their great open field tackle. Puckett's not able to make that tackle. Charlie Box had daylight. Down to the 40-yard line. Gain of 16 on the play. Charlie Box getting a heavy dose of carries, sending out the potential play action over the top. Look for a McKee on a crossing route here, going the opposite way of where the runs have been flowing the entire possession. Back to shotgun formation for Bertolini. Two wide receivers on the far side. Bertolini. Fakes a quick toss. Looked like a broken play. Bertolini calls his own number, tackled at the 40 Let's see, he got past the 40 down to the U.S. Here spot at the 37-yard line gain of three. Brought down by Stauffer there. As you said, that looked like a scramble play, not knowing where to go. Well, Bertolini looked immediately to his left, and I believe he was looking for his wide receiver. All, Nobody was home. All the receivers had their back tur backs turned, but that's a good play for a young quarterback making a veteran move, tucking the ball, running, not trying to make anything more of it. Second down and seven. Bertolini goes back under center. Handoff goes to Charlie Box. Here we go. Charlie Box sidesteps one, still on his feet. Down inside the 30. Bosch pushing him as he makes his way down to the 26. 19 yards. That's a beautifully designed counterplay from Coach Gicking. First down. This is ball spotted at the 26. Marple Newtown approaching the red zone. Ball spotted on the 26. Gain of. 11 yard gain, under four minutes to go here and a quick moving first quarter. First down and 10, Bertolini. Going under center, two wide receivers on the far side. Play action, Bertolini rolling to his left. He has a man along the far side. It's complete to Eric McKee. He's knocked out of bounds. Just as we were talking about earlier, looking for McKee on that crossing route. Got him there. And that's the play action we we're exactly talking about. Sets up the one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside. Ball spot on the 13, gain of 13 on the play. And, and running the ball effectively is going to make Pencrest have to come out of that double safety look. Checking into the game, number seven, tight end Matt Cantwell. As we're near the end of the first quarter, 3.30 here in the first. Shotgun formation for Bertolini. McKee goes in motion to the near side. Handoff goes to Box. Great open field tackle by Pencrest along the near side, number 22 on the tackle. Again, great tackle by number 22. He's been all over the field, and he wasn't alone. There's multiple guys there sniffing out that play. No gain on the play. A lot of times on that toss play, the receiver's tipping off where the ball's going. Second down and 10 from the 13-yard line for Bertolini. Four wide receivers. Main goes in motion. That's McKee to the near side. Look for him. Instead, it's a handoff to Charlie Box along the far side. Ball is all on the ground, but the flags fly in the area of holding. So the official call is. Now, if you're Pencrest, are you going to decline the penalty, make it third down, or are you going to back them all the way up? Uh, excuse me, there was the beanie sort of ball, ball loose. There was no flag, but is a loss on the play. Back to the 16-yard line, loss of three. And we're in a situation where if they get a few yards, they might be able to kick it here compared to going for it. Third down and 13, 215 here in the first. Four wide receivers for Bertolini. Key in motion again. Rolling that way, Bertolini looking for his guy. Calls his own number. Able to pick up a few. He's now in field goal range. What's we'll see coach kicking the sides to do. We we'll see they spot the ball. Looks like 13, so he's able to pick up three on that. So it's fourth down and 10. Offense is staying on the field for coach kicking. This might be a scenario where you try and get him the jump, make it fourth and five compared to fourth and, then, and 10. And then take a timeout. Correct. Play clock's winding down a little bit, too. They better hurry up to the line. 
fourth down and ten. Think Coach Gakin might want to talk this one over. Fourth, fourth down, ten yards to go. They can still pick up a first down. Bertolini. Snap, looks to his left. Rolls to his right. Looking, looking, trying to make people miss. He's got nowhere to go. Tries to call his own number. Takes a pile with him, but he is not going to get that first down marker. Pancrest defense holds. Bertolini's read. He was in scramble mode. Turnover on downs. Great stand if you're Pancrest. A minute five. Now after throwing the ball those times on the first possession, now you gotta try and run the ball, get your defense a little bit of a breather. Ball is spotted on the six yard line to begin this drive. A minute five, first down and 10. Cello, trips formation on the far side for him. Burke the tailback. Handoff goes to him along the near side. Stuffed trying to bounce the it line. back. Good job by the big boys up front making the tackle. I wouldn't be surprised to see Coach change it up a little bit at running back. See Calt back there. Multiple guys. Burke's been getting the workload so far. Fast pace first quarter. Winding down. 40 seconds left. As that carry was no gain on the play. Second down and 10 for the Lions. Four wide receivers for Cello. Burke goes to the far side. Drops back to pass. Cello intercepted by Marple Newtown along the far side. Nobody was home for Cello. Airmailed it. Intercepted by, I believe that's 17 along. 17 of Marple Newtown along the far sideline. Good job by him. The intercept the ball. Yukenovich on the interception. Sets up Marple Newtown in the red zone. So the first turnover of the game proves to be costly. That's, that's a great play to intercept that ball as he was almost on the ground when the ball was coming into his hands. 18 seconds will begin this drive for the Tigers from the 16 yard line. Look for them to take a shot here right out, out of that, that turnover. Exactly, Charlie. Change momentum of the game. First down and 10 from the 16 for Bertolini. Look at the cushion on the near side for McKee and company. Handoff goes to Charlie Box trying to cash in. Spins off one, still on his feet. That's the thing about Charlie Box. He will not go down on the first tackle. That will do it for the first quarter. We're tied at zero as we head to the second. You're listening to Marple Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. Hey, Tiger fans. Did you know that only the Philly Pretzel Factory can make the Philadelphia Pretzel? That's because they have authentic, genuine quality of a Philly pretzel. They're always hot, always fresh, and always a great deal. When I go to the Philly Pretzel Factory, I know I'm eating the original Philly soft pretzel. Bring them to a sporting event, a work party, or just for a quick snack, and you can be sure that the Philly Pretzel Factory will deliver a pretzel of great taste and value. Stop in today at any of their locations, including Broomall, Springfield, Folsom, and Bryn Mawr. Or visit their website, phillypretzelfactory.com, for a complete listing of locations in the Delaware Valley. And remember, if it's not from the Philly Pretzel Factory, it's not a real pretzel. Adams Harley Davidson supports Marple Newtown Tigers football. Adams Harley Davidson Media PA 1011 Baltimore Pike. Adams Harley Davidson Chad's Ford PA 1241 Baltimore Pike. Adams in Summersville, Pennsylvania 3255 State Road. Adams in Electric City Harley Davidson Scranton PA 1834 Scranton Carbondale Highway. Adams Harley Davidson Rahway, New Jersey 12 West Milton Avenue. Demo rides every day. Full events calendar, hours, directions, and contact information. AdamsHD.com. Adams Harley Davidson Tiger Pride. You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. Welcome back to the second quarter of action. Marple Newtown knocking on the door after Yukenovich interception. Second down and two yards to go from the eight-yard line. See if the Tigers go back to Charlie Boxer. Look to put it this one in the air. 
as the Tigers are knocking on the door. Pancras defense has been on the field for a long time. Look for more heavy dose of the run. Bertolini under center. Handoff goes to Charlie Box. Met at the line of scrimmage. Bounces off one tackler. Lowers his shoulder. He's inside the five. Just as we talked about gang tackling, three, four people there right after first contact. Down to the four. Give him four yards on the carry as Charlie, a big job. Not a big boy, big boy. Great job by the defensive line of the Lions meeting Charlie Box in the backfield. They're, they're again on the inside, not so much the outside, but the interior defensive linemen are doing a good job getting in the backfield. First down and goal from the four, Bertolini. Quick handoff goes to Charlie Box around one. He's in. Marple Newtown gets on the board. It's bound, to, it's bound to happen when your defense is on the field almost the entire first quarter there for Pencrest. Running the ball, running the ball, running the ball, not being able to sub. The turnover proves to be costly as Box cashes this one in. Marple Newtowns, number 12. Ty John, he seems to be the kicker now for Marple Newtown. Extra points out of a Conroy hold. Clean snap, kick is up, the kick is... Good. Marple Newtown takes a 7 0 lead here. 11 23 here in the second. Box cashed that one in from four yards out. You're listening to Marple Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. If you love Philadelphia sports and good food, then there's no better place to catch a game than Barnaby's of America in Havertown. Located off the Broomall Havertown exit of the Blue Route, Barnaby's is the place to be for the big game. You can enjoy dinner in their dining room or grab appetizers on the enclosed deck or even head downstairs for a night of dancing and arcade games. You can even book your next event at Barnaby's of America in Havertown and take advantage of their party specials. So for sports, food, and a great experience, stop by Barnaby's of America in Havertown today. You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. Welcome back as Yukenovich interception proves to be costly for the Lions. Tigers cash in six excuse me, four yards out by Charlie Box. John to kick this one away. Kicking off for Marple Newtown, number 12, Ty John. But Marple Newtown utilizing the big boys as John's kick is off. Returnable from the 12, and his knee was down, so no return for 18 of the Lions. Liam Gilmore, we said his name a good amount tonight, Charlie. We have in the secondary at receiver, now at returner. But that's just something you got to have awareness of. you got to know if your knee's down. And this is just like college, where if you're down even without contact, that's where the ball's spotted. It was a wobbly kick. It wasn't your traditional great kick, as that actually proved to be helpful for the Tigers. As it's first down and 10 from the 19-yard line, this drive will begin with 11:22 here in the second quarter. Cello trying to redeem himself after an interception on the last drive. Three wide receivers for him. Burke the tailback. Cello hands it off. Marple Newtown not surprised. Burke didn't have anywhere to go. Few Tigers in on the play. Small on the tackle. Now here is an offensive play caller. You gotta get a little more creative here. I think we've seen about five, six inside zones to Burke. So you're saying mix it up, do a read option or another toss to the outside? Because Marple Newtown is playing that container. An option, a toss, a counter, literally anything but an inside zone because the defense is packing it in even though they do have outside containment. Second down and 10. No gain on the play for Burke. Two wide receivers to the far side for Cello. Burke goes to the far side on his left hip, going left to right. The handoff this time to Burke. Marple Newtown's defensive line doing a good job containing that one. Bosch on the tackle. An another inside zone called with the defensive line stacked right in the middle. And the backers are coming up right to the line like they're knowing the play. So it is a gain on the play. They gave him one on the carry. Do you put this one in the air? I think you have to put this one in the, in the air based off what we've seen with the running game so far. And they tried to trick play on the last third down. That didn't work. Four wide receivers for the Lions. Marple Newtown showing pressure. Mathis drops back in the coverage. Throw deep down the field. Marple Newtown picked off by 
Number 26 to Fruscio, I believe. Yes. Cage brings him down to prevent any more of a return. So Paul DeFruccio picks up Marple Newtown's second interception of the first half. This one, again, it's almost like a punt, Charlie, because he did toss it down the field, trying to force the issue, but there was double coverage on the play. It definitely was like a punt, but that ball was thrown in the three, four defenders. You could have taken your pick as to who got that one. First down and 10 for Marple Newtown. 9.42 will begin this drive in the second quarter. Ball spotted on the 47-yard line. Already in Lions territory, looking to cash in. See the Marple Newtown Tigers take a straight down the field, try and ride this momentum. I'd always be in favor of that. You got all the momentum based off a turnover, take your shot. Plus, the defensive backs are playing 10 yards off as Coach Gicking wants to talk this one over. 9.42, they got the interception. We'll step aside as well as the Tigers lead 7-0 here in the second. You're listening to Marple Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. Searching for a reliable heating and air conditioning company? Then DZO Mechanical is here to fulfill your every need. Privately owned, DZO offers residential and commercial services in heating, air conditioning, and ventilation. Since 2000, DZO has proudly served the Delaware County and Tri-State area, offering customers great service at fair rates. For a free estimate, call DZO at 484-454-3346 or online at www.dzomechanical.com. Are you thinking of buying or selling your home? If that's the case, call Marple Newtown real estate expert Karen Garbett with the Karen Garbett Real Estate Team. Karen has over 55 star reviews on Zillow. She supports Marple Newtown High School football and goes the extra mile for you. You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. Welcome back as the interceptions give Marple Newtown momentum in an upbeat mood. Puts the ball inside the Lions territory. 9.42 here in the second from the 47-yard line. Bertolini under center. Giving the wide receivers a 10-yard cushion. Drops back. Play action. Bertolini looking for that shot. One-on-one with McKee. Incomplete. Cage on the coverage. That's great coverage by Cage. He was step for step with McKee. But to my point earlier, Charlie, isn't that when you want to take a quick one, two, three, toss it to McKee because he's already given an eight-yard cushion? Definitely. Even a wide receiver screen, you got one blocking, throw it behind, and you got open field everywhere because both defensive backs are about eight, ten yards off the ball. Second down and ten. Bertolini trip formation on the far side for him. Handoff goes to Charlie Box on the near side. He's able to escape from one. Search his way down to the 41-yard line. Give him six on the carry. And here's that two-down territory again that we were talking about. Absolutely. You have to think quarterback can run it. You have Box used as misdirection. McKee can run it as well. You got a variety of different options if you're the Tigers. We, we haven't seen much of a quarterback run yet. Maybe you run a little bit of a read option here. Everybody goes with Box, pull the ball. Third down and four. Nine minutes to go here in the second. Bertolini, shotgun. Lines look like they're bringing pressure. It's going to be a pop pass to the outsides. Complete the Schumacher down to the 35-yard line. Gain of six on the play. That looked like an RPO there, Dave. Explain to the folks at home. RPO, run pass option. It's got to be quick because you can't have linemen running downfield on a pass. So if you see that receiver breaking on a slant route or a curl, you got to get the ball out quick. And they did pick up a quick first down. First down and 10 ball spotted on the Lions 35-yard line. Trips formation on the near side. Empty backfield for Bertolini. Man goes in motion. That's box. They fake it to him. Quick toss to the outside. Is it nearly intercepted along the far sideline as it looks like Schumacher was the intended target. O'Donnell in coverage there. O'Donnell Almost came on the down coverage. with the pick. I mean, it's, it's a tip drill. You practice that every day and during warm-ups. Say that again? You practice that tip drill every day. It's different on those lights in the varsity field, man. Definitely is. Second down and 10 after the incomplete pass. 8.22 here in the second. Tigers looking to add to their 7-0 lead. Schumacher did pick up the first down on the drive. Was unable to reel that last one in. Second down and 10. Bertolini under center. 
Handoff goes to Charlie Box. Charlie Box carries. Off tackle. We haven't seen that big play yet by Charlie Box where he just breaks it, Charlie, but he is picking up chunk yards as that one was down to the 29 gain of six. Pencrest opened the game in a two safety look, and as been, Marple has been running the ball more effectively, the safeties are starting to creep down, the linebackers are starting to creep down more. So, Box may be getting stuff now. Look for him to break one later. Absolutely. Four yard pickup. They're down and six yards to go. Is the ball spot actually on the 31 yard line? See if they let Bertolini air this one out as he's under center. Two wide receivers to the near side. Bertolini utilizing that hard count and he's able to provide encroachment. See what they call that ball. Encroachment against the Lions. That's going to make it third and one compared to third and six. And we've seen this the last couple weeks. And the more Bertolini provides this, Steve says this, Charlie, the hard count can change the game. We saw all last year, Paoletti, free five yards, changes the third down and six to a third down and one. And we've been talking about taking shots all night on third and one now. You can take a shot at the end zone. And if you come up short on fourth and one, a little sneaker dive up the middle. Ball spot on the 26 yard line, third down to one. Handoff goes to Charlie Box. He finds a crease. He's in! Charlie Box's second score, 26 yards out. There it is. He broke one. With everyone in the box, you get past that second level, you're gone. Box's second score of the first half. 7.05 here in the second quarter. Marple Newtown adds to their 7 0 lead. Charlie Box finally found that crease and was able to escape. John to kick this extra point out of a Conroy hold. Got to give credit to the boys up front. What a great hole from that offensive line. Marker down. Looks like encroachment against the Lions. Coach kicking. Tempted. As Nick Sirianni did last week. He pushed the ball two. up to the one. Go for two. But it looks like Coach Gicking's going to kick it here. He'll kick the extra point. So it's same kicker in John. Same holder as Conroy. Low snap. Kick is up. The kick is good. 14 to nothing. Tigers. 7.05 here in the second. We'll step aside as the Tigers take a 14 to nothing lead. You're listening to Marple Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. The wait is over, Marple. The first bar since Prohibition has opened up in your backyard. Marple Public House, located at 31 North Sprawl Road in Broomall, is home to award-winning dishes, a 16-rotating tap system, top-shelf liquor, and an elegant but fun place to spend time with family and friends. See what all the hype is about. Check them out online at www.marple.pub, and be sure to catch the radio crew in there after each Friday night game. Fidato Partners is a regional management consulting advisory and executive search firm with offices in Berwyn, Philadelphia, and New York City. Fidato Partners LLC helps companies navigate the challenges and complexities of today's ever-changing business landscape with expertise in technical accounting, system implementations, internal audit, finance transfer. You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. John kicks this one away after the touchdown by Box. Takes a bounce. Gilmore from inside is 10. He's able to make a few Tigers miss. Cuts back. He's tackled down at the 29-yard line. See the mark him down at the 30. That's where this Lions team will come out with 6.57 here in the second quarter. Tackle by Johnny Small. And for Cello and company on offense, even if you don't score here, you need to take up a few minutes of clock. Their defense has been on the field the entire first half. With that point said, do you continue to run that inside zone? Do you mix it up? Do you do a quarterback keeper every once in a while? Because Cello can run it himself. Cello can run it. I'm surprised he hasn't run more. And I'm not against that inside zone, but it's got to be mixed up because the defense has been sniffing it out the entire game. Shotgun formation for Cello. Fakes it. Calls his own number. Finds a crease. Good job by him. That's what you're talking about, Charlie. On the pre-snap before that play, Marple had four defensive linemen. 
almost all lined up within the center and both guards. Not, not one on the edge. They're keen on that play. Luster makes the tackle, but not before an eight-yard carry by the quarterback. Schumacher also in on the tackle. Second down and two. Cajun O'Donnell near side. Corners are playing a little bit off. Burke goes in motion to the far side for Cello. Calls his own number design quarterback sneak. He has the first down. Two straight quarterback runs giving Pancrest that first down. Now Pancrest can double up the Tigers. They will get the ball to begin the second half. Touchdown here could change the complete complexion of this one. That's a Bill Belichick special going right down the field, scoring with little to no time left and getting the ball to start the second half. Ball spotted at the 43-yard line, gain of five. And if you're Lions, you have all your timeouts. You're in no rush. You're in no rush at all. First down and 10. Two wide receivers to the far side for Cello. Marple Newtown's math is showing. Blitz backs out of it. Burke gets the handoff. It's tackled by Schumacher as he's tripped down, but not before he's in inside Marple Newtown territory. And there's the that counter. Tigers 48. Go ahead, Charlie. There's the counter that we were talking about that they've been trying to set up for quarter and a half. Injured player down on the field. We'll step aside with 519 here in the second. You're listening to Marple Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. If you suffer from back or neck pain, injury or headaches, then Dr. Tom Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center are here to help. Dr. Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center have been serving Delaware County residents for over 15 years. They take a gentle approach and utilize current techniques to help manage your pain. To address your back and neck related pain or injuries, call the Advanced Chiropractic Center today at 610-356-2300 or visit drtomgraziano.com and tell them the Tigers Radio Network sent you. If you're having plumbing problems, heating problems, cooling problems, don't have an attack, call Bobby Mack. Bob McNamara Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling is located right here in Marple Township for 29 years. You can call Bobby Mack, 610 610- 496-6260 or visit their website for all your heating, cooling and plumbing needs at bobmcnamaraplumbing.com You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on marplenewtownfootball.com Welcome back as the Lions are in Marple Newtown territory injured player able to get off under his own power. Charlie, do you go to the air, but you have been running the ball well. Keep keep the ball on the ground right now as you're moving the ball. But they've been mixing it up. You saw a few quarterback runs, counter. Maybe now you can go back to that inside zone as you have him guessing, with Kout now in the backfield. He goes in motion to the far side. And that's where they actually fake it to him. Good keeper, but he is met by Bosch and number four, Eric McKee. Loss on the play. Back to the 50 in midfield. Loss of two. Even though he only lost the yard. Actually, Mark, at the 49. You're right. Along the yard. Even though he lost the yard there, that was a great decision to pull the ball as there's a guy ready to take out the running back. Could have even caused a fumble. Then they need two yards. 420 here in the second. Lions trailing 14 to nothing. Charlie Box has found the end zone twice for the Tigers. One from four yard out, the other from 26. I'm Dave DePasco alongside Charlie DePasco, Eric Kelling, Jim Osman, and the rest of the TRN. Thank you for listening to this presentation of high school football. Press Jello. coverage. Here we go. Man to man across the board for the Lions. Rolls to the far side. 15. Looking down the field. Incomplete for a Cage. Short hopped it. That was a McNabb special. Looking for Cage again. And there's two, three guys in the area. But he was still open. That's a throw that most likely needs to be made. And no the, decision here. You go for it. I would go for it. But here comes the punting unit for Pencrest. Maybe look for a fake here. Defense has to stay disciplined. Cowed in the pump for Pencrest. Count in the punt. Brennan Cowles, number two, 
You gotta watch a fake, right? Definitely you gotta watch a fake, whether it's a run or a throw. Need two yards. And the defense is still on the field for Marple. Clean snap. High kick. Marple Newtown's just gonna let it bounce. Just up in the air. They say get away from it. It takes a Lions roll down to the 21 yard line. This is where Marple Newtown will take out. And this is what Steve talks about all the time. The two minute drill they practice every, almost every day. The two minute drill. You do practice the two minute drill, but you're in no rush here. You got three minutes, 38 seconds, and you got two timeouts. So the ball's on their own 21 yard line, 338 here in the first. You also have to remember half. in high school that the clock stops on the first down for the chains to get set. So you use that almost as extra timeouts. First down and 10 for Bertolini and the Tigers. Quick snap, quick toss to the outside, complete to Eric McKee. He gets a block, now he's trying to cut it back to the near side. He's reversing field. Here goes Eric McKee as he gets a great block by Bertolini, still on his feet. And now he's taken out of bounds. He just ran about 80 yards to the 35 yard line, gain of 14. There's that receiver screen we were talking about when those corners are playing so far off. Get that lead blocker in front find that open field. Clock continues to run, this is a first down, but he just ran from the far side of the field to the near side of the field, looks like the Sean Jackson trying to cross the field. First down and 10 from the 35 yard line. Bertolini under center, see if he goes to Charlie Box. Handoff goes to Box, the far side breaks free, here goes Charlie Box, he nearly broke that one. With a touchdown, saving tackle once again, number eight of the Lions. Zach Puckett again on that tackle. He's had at least three or four open field tackles where if he didn't bring down box, he was gone. Tackle down at the 43 yard line, gain of eight. If you're in the Tigers, you might want to pick up the pace as it's second down and two, 230 here in the second quarter. Tigers will kick the ball to begin the second half as the Lions won the coin toss. Trip formation on the far side. Box goes in motion that way. Fakes it to him. Come back to the near side to slant pattern to Eric McKee. He has the first down. He breaks free. 40, 35, 30. Sidestep. Stays on his feet. He's down inside the 25. Eric McKee all on this drive. That's why pre-snap motion is so important. You have Box going in motion in front of the quarterback. All the eyes go towards him, and you look at that slant route from McKee. 33-yard pickup from Bertolini to McKee. First down and 10 from the 24-yard line. Bertolini under center. Under two minutes to go. Handoff goes to Charlie Box. He's met at the line of scrimmage. He's able to weave his way past one, but not another. Tackled down at the 22-yard line. Gain of two on the play. O'Donnell's been all over the field for the Lions. Second down and eight. Charlie, do you do you try to put this one back in the air? You got you got your two timeouts. You got a minute 20 until half. You can do almost anything you want here with your timeouts, which they do only have two. Second down and eight. Empty backfield for Bertolini. Box goes in motion. They fake it to him. Bertolini rolls to his left. Lost it down to McKee in the end zone. Incomplete. Cage on the coverage. Now on third and eight, you almost have to put the ball in the air. McKee's lucky there that he didn't get offensive pass interference called there as he both arms extended right on Cage. They rarely call that in high school football, though. They, this isn't the pros. It isn't the pros, but when you got both hands on the defensive back and fully extend, lucky you don't get that Thank penalty. You. Third down and eight as the sophomore quarterback's getting more confidence and reps with his guys. You can see a different quarterback from week to week. Third down and eight for the lefty. Two wide receivers on the near side. Bernalini now goes under center. Handoff goes to Charlie Box, cuts it back. He is met 
after a gain of two. So, timeout Marple Newtown, not Pencrest. It looked like Pencrest was going to be content with them running all the clock all the way down and kicking a field goal. So there's 56 seconds left. We'll keep it here. It's 14 nothing Tigers looking to add to their lead. Ball spotted on the 20. Too long for a field goal attempt. So what's the call? Do you go with Charlie Block screen? Do you try and just, hey, last time you go empty and let your your quarterback try and figure it out? I, I think you definitely go empty here. You spread them all the way out across the field. McKee on the outside, box in the slot. And then if nothing's there, everyone's spread out. Bertolini takes off again. You know what we haven't seen? We've seen that play action off of the Charlie Box coming across, but you haven't seen the handoff go to Charlie Box. You haven't seen the handoff go to Charlie Box. But all the attention has been going towards him almost every single time, and that's why you see McKee getting all these targets. Fourth down and five for Coach Kicking and the Tigers. They lead 14 to nothing as we approach halftime. It's been a fast-paced first half. There wasn't much offense, but the Tigers have picked it up here in the second quarter. The interception is proven to be costly and changing this game. Fourth down and five, 56 seconds left here in the second. Tigers going for it from the Lions 20 yard line. Four receivers, box in the backfield. Bertolini, that's Conroy going in motion to the far side. Drops back to pass, swing pass to Charlie Box, he's able and he runs into his own teammate. He has the first down, number two. Oh, in on the coverage. Charlie Box looked to cut a bet, Count. He made Count miss. And then he ran into his own big fella. That's going to be on Come On Man next week. He may have missed, but that's a great job by Cal just to be there. Because if he's not there, it's an easy score. And there's no one else there. So the turnover on downs puts the ball at the 21-yard line. 50 seconds left. That'll be a fun one to watch on film tomorrow. Unless you can get a big play here, I think Pencrest should be going in the half, not risking turning the ball over the way they've been throwing it. Burks back into the game, tailback on his left hip. Cello hands it off to him. And that's a crease. That's the big play you're talking about, Charlie, as he's down to the Marple Newtown 44-yard line. 21-yard gain. We'll see if they mark it, actually. They mark it down at the 43. And Pencrest chose... Now they choose to call the timeout, but the clock started running a little bit before they called it. So 22-yard pickup, 40 seconds. John on the tackle, but they want it. it looked like you're talking about running it out, but Burke made a, something out of nothing. Now do you take that chance down the field? They, they got 40 seconds, two timeouts. Most likely to go 57 yards. I don't think they're going to be kicking a field goal in a two-touchdown game. Okay, that's fair. I, if Marple's playing another two high safety look, I think they hand it off again. I want to take your shot until you absolutely have to. Because, again, clock stops on the first down for the chains to reset, and you still got two timeouts to use. Okay, they're in their own territory still. Ball spot at the 43-yard line. Good pickup by Burke, 20-plus yard carry on first down. 40 seconds left till half. Tigers lead by two scores. Cello, shotgun formation, four wide receivers. Looks to his left. Screen pass, beautifully designed to Burke. He has a crease. He's in the Marple Newtown territory. Timeout. Now, no timeout as they rush to the line. Look like the Lions are going to take it. They call Clock two plays to run. A, call two plays. No the huddle there, for Dave. the Lions. After the screen pass goes to the 43-yard line of Marple Newtown. Quick toss in the near side. That's Cage. Tiptoe. Beautiful caught by the senior wide receiver. Down at the 39-yard line. Gain of four. And now the ball has to be put in there. 20 seconds, two timeouts. In a hurry-up situation right there, though, that's where you call two plays in huddle. That's why they got up to the line so quickly. And great job by Cage to get out of bounds there. So you said they called two plays into the huddle? You call two plays into the huddle. First play and second play. First down, need five. Second down and five from Marple Newtown. Playing back. It looks like the Jim Schwartz line defense. As Cello puts Burke on his left hip. Three, make it four wide receivers. Drops back to pass. 
Pressure. He's able to loot it. Calls his own number and has a first down. He's inside the 30. Keep the clock running. And he's still in. 15. Let's see the 10 seconds Timeout showing on the Lions. clock. So you got 10 seconds left. Ball spotted at the 29-yard line. Two shots. I think you definitely take two shots, but Dave, I wouldn't go comparing that to the Jim Schwartz defense yet. I didn't see any fourth and 23s with eight defenders at the sticks. Hey, you never know. As Marple Newton has been playing back though this entire time and Pankhurst has been able to capitalize. They have been able to capitalize and that's what happens when you're playing so many guys off ball in the secondary. However, they gotta go 30 yards, probably two plays to score. Uh, again, as I said at the beginning of the drive, I don't see them kicking a field goal. 10 seconds left. First down and 10 from the 29 yard line. Four receivers set for Pencrest coming So you coming have out trips here. on the far side. Cello, shotgun. Burke on his left hip. Rolling to his left, looking, looking. It's a wheel route going down the sideline. That's where he's looking for Cage. It's up in the air, batted down beautifully by Marple Newtown, defender along the far sideline. DeFruccio is making a name for himself as he has an interception. Now a beautiful pass breakup. That's a great pass breakup. Again, intended for Cage who, he had to step on him and that's a tough throw, but that, if that's another two, three yards in the air, that's a touchdown. If the first year's not there, that is a touchdown. That's a great pass breakup, but that's why Cello rolled to his left, right? Because he needed to buy time for Cage to get down that sideline. And that's another example of what you were talking about with the way the defense is set up. They got trips over there, only three defenders. You normally have four with, with a high safety. Okay, so last play of the half. There's three seconds left. This is gonna be the last one. Four wide receivers for Cello. This one's got to get into the end zone. Marple Newtown playing back in coverage. Cello rolling to his left. Looking, looking, throwing over the middle. Ooh! Intended for seven. That's going to be a flag. He went airborne. So that's going to be a personal foul. Now, Eric, correct me if I'm wrong. That keeps the half alive? Yes. Can't end yes. On you can, yeah, you cannot end on a penalty. So they're going to get one more shot here. Let's one on time down. So they're talking this one over. I believe it was for unnecessary contact. And even though yeah, it was unnecessary contact, that's just something as a defender you have to be aware of. The ball wasn't thrown to the end zone. Let him catch it. You bring him down. The half's over. You go up into the locker room 14 nothing. That's where we go back to Jim's discipline. Teams have to know what is going on. It actually looks a little ticky tack. He kind of he he was he was it he was up in the air. Cage was up in the air quite a ways. I I'm not You're not sure if he touched I, him I, I on that replay? He didn't like tattoo him enough to oh, no, we got a call. Here we go. Here's the call. Targeting. That's interesting. Looks like the referee pointed to his head. They that would indicate targeting. We need the official call. We'll step aside real quick. You're listening to Marple Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. Hey Tigers fans, did you know that only the Philly Pretzel Factory can make the Philadelphia Pretzel? Because they have authentic, genuine quality of a Philly Pretzel. They're always hot, always fresh, always a great... You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. So that's illegal helmet contact against the Tigers. Untimed down from the 14 yard line. Impressive drive by the Lions. And they're gonna attempt a field goal. I believe it is Woolery kicking this field goal. The field goal for the Lions. Penalty marker is down. Penalty marker. Timeout. 
Timeout lines will step aside as last play of the half. You're listening to Marple Newtown Football on Tigers Radio Network. Adams Harley Davidson supports Marple Newtown Tigers football. Adams Harley Davidson Media PA 1011 Baltimore. Pike. Adams Harley Davidson Chad's Ford PA 1241 Baltimore. Pike. Adams in Summersville, Pennsylvania 3255 State Road. Adams in Electric City Harley Davidson Scranton PA 1834 Scranton Carbondale Highway. Adams Harley Davidson Rahway, New Jersey 12 West Milton Avenue. Demo rides every day. Full events calendar, hours, directions, and contact information. Adams H. Welcome back as we're in the kick this field. Field goal. Zeros on the board. The kick is up. The kick is good. There goes the shutout. 14 to 3 at the half. We'll step aside. Coming up next, second half action. Marble Newtown taking on Pancrest. Pancrest will get the ball to begin the second half. You're listening to Marple Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. If you love if you suffer from back or neck food, pain, then no injury or headache, to then Dr. Tom Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center are here to help. Dr. Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center have been serving Delaware County residents for over 15 years. They take a gentle approach and utilize current techniques to help manage your pain. To address your back and neck related pain or injuries, call the Advanced Chiropractic Center today at 610-356-2300 or visit drtomgraziano.com and tell them the Tigers Radio Network sent you. Oh man, the Philly Pretzel Factory has done it again. They took a Philly tradition and made it even better. Now you already know the Philly Pretzel Factory has the best soft pretzel. Well now, they're making a cheese steak pretzel. That's right, a Philly cheesesteak on the inside, surrounded by those piping hot, fresh, chewy pretzels. This is as Philly as it gets. A cheesesteak and a pretzel? Incredible! How great are those guys over there? They've got their original pretzels, the cinnamon pretzels, the pretzel dogs, and the party trays. And now, the Philly cheese steak pretzel. Bring them for tailgating, watching a game with the boys, a barbecue, or even a kid's birthday party. Head over to the Philly Pretzel Factory for the all-new cheese steak pretzel. And remember, if it's not from the Philly Pretzel Factory, it's not a real pretzel. If you're having plumbing problems, heating problems, cooling problems, don't have an attack, call Bobby Mack. Bob McNamara Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling is located right here in Marple Township for 29 years. You can call Bobby Mack, 610-496-6260, or visit their website for all your heating, cooling, and plumbing needs at bobmcnamaraplumbing.com. The wait is over, Delco. No more driving down to the city in that awful traffic just to get an authentic cheesesteak. Delco Steaks located in Bruma has the best farm fresh meat right from Chambersburg, PA. Their simple menu offers cheesesteaks, chicken cheesesteaks, charbroiled burgers, hot dogs, homemade chicken fingers, and the most delicious thin crinkle cut fries. Call today for delivery or pickup at 610-356-1192 and check out their menu online at DelcoSteaks.com. See why these guys were Philly Magazine's top pick for cheesesteak joints in all Philadelphia. Delco Steaks, you can't beat our meat. Adams Harley Davidson supports Marple Newtown Tigers football. Adams Harley Davidson Media PA, 1011 Baltimore Pike. Adams Harley Davidson Chad's Ford PA, 1241 Baltimore Pike. Adams in Summersville, Pennsylvania, 3255 State Road. Adams in Electric City, Harley Davidson Scranton PA, 1834 Scranton Carbondale Highway. Adams Harley Davidson Rahway, New Jersey, 12 West Milton Avenue. Demo rides every day. Full events calendar, hours, directions and contact information. AdamsHD.com. Adams Harley Davidson. Tiger Pride. If you suffer from back or neck pain, injury or headaches, then Dr. Tom Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center are here to help. Dr. Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center have been serving Delaware County residents for over 15 years. They take a gentle approach and utilize current techniques to help manage your pain. To address your back and neck related pain or injuries, call the Advanced Chiropractic Center today at 610-356-2300 or visit drtomgraziano.com and tell them the Tigers Radio Network sent you. Hey Tigers fans, did you know that only the Philly Pretzel Factory can make the Philadelphia Pretzel? Because they have authentic, genuine quality of a Philly Pretzel. They're always hot, always fresh, always a great deal. When I go to the Philly Pretzel Factory, I know I'm eating the original Philly soft pretzel. 
bring them to a sporting event, a work party, even for a quick snack, and you can be sure that the Philly Pretzel Factory will deliver a pretzel of great taste and value. Stop in today at any of their locations, including Broomall, Springfield, Folsom, and Bryn Mawr, or visit their website at phillypretzelfactory.com for a complete listing of locations in the Delaware Valley. And remember, if it's not from the Philly Pretzel Factory, it's not a real pretzel. Taking the lead in the tree care today is Mike Gillen at MG Tree. Mike is a resident of Brumo, a 1990 MN graduate, and was co-captain of the football team in 1990. Located in Brumo, MG Tree provides tree care to shaping and trimming or complete tree removal, not to mention a 24-hour emergency service. These experienced professionals are serving those in Delaware County and the main line. Keep your trees looking healthy and great. Give them a call for an appointment today at 610-359-9970. Again, 610-359-9970. Adams Harley-Davidson supports Marple Newtown Tigers football. Adams Harley-Davidson, Media PA, 1011 Baltimore Park. Adams Harley-Davidson, Chad's Ford PA, 1241 Baltimore Park. Adams in Sellersville, Pennsylvania, 3255 State Road. Adams in Electric City, Harley-Davidson, Scranton, PA, 1534 Scranton Carbondale Highway, Adams Harley Davidson, Rawway, New Jersey, 12 West Milton Avenue. Demo rides every day. Full events calendar, hours, directions, and contact information. AdamsHD.com. Adams Harley Davidson. Tiger Pride. Searching for a reliable heating and air conditioning company? Then DZO Mechanical is here to fulfill your every need. Privately owned, DZO offers residential and commercial services in heating, air conditioning, and ventilation. Since 2000, DZO has proudly served the Delaware County and Tri-State area, offering customers great service at fair rates. For a free estimate, call DZO at 484-454-3346 or online at www.dzomechanical.com. If you love Philadelphia sports and good food, then there's no better place to catch a game than Barnaby's of America in Havertown. Located off the Broomall Havertown exit of the Blue Route, Barnaby's is the place to be for the big game. You can enjoy dinner in their dining room or grab appetizers on the enclosed deck or even head downstairs for a night of dancing and arcade games. You can even book your next event at Barnaby's of America in Havertown and take advantage of their party specials. So for sports, food, and a great experience, stop by Barnaby's of America in Havertown today. Are you thinking of buying or selling your home? If that's the case, call Marple Newtown real estate expert Karen Garbett with the Karen Garbett Real Estate Team. Karen has over 55-star reviews on Zillow. She supports Marple Newtown High School football and goes the extra mile for you. In fact, the $500 donation will be made by her to the football team in your name for anyone who calls Karen and has their home bought or sold with her that goes to settlement. Want a good return on investment? Be sure to give Karen a call at 610-331-4546. The wait is over, Marple, the first bar since Prohibition has opened up in your backyard. Marple Public House, located at 31 North Sprawl Road in Broomall, is home to award-winning dishes, a 16-rotating tap system, top-shelf liquor, and an elegant but fun place to spend time with family and friends. See what all the hype is about. Check them out online at www.marple.pub, and be sure to catch the radio crew in there after each Friday night game. Fidato Partners is a regional management consulting advisory and executive search firm with offices in Berwyn, Philadelphia, and New York City. Fidato Partners LLC helps companies navigate the challenges and complexities of today's ever-changing business landscape with expertise in technical accounting, system implementations, internal audit, finance transformation, and data management. We help global businesses solve their most critical finance, accounting, system, personnel, and data issues. Learn more at www.fidatopartners.com or reach out to Patrick McGowan. If you suffer from back or neck pain, injury or headaches, then Dr. Tom Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center are here to help. Dr. Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center have been serving Delaware County residents for over 15 years. They take a gentle approach and utilize current techniques to help manage your pain. To address your back and neck related pain or injuries, call the Advanced Chiropractic Center today at 610-356-2300 or visit drtomgraziano.com and tell them the Tigers Radio Network sent you. Oh man, the Philly Pretzel Factory has done it again. They took a Philly tradition and made it even better. Now you already know the Philly Pretzel Factory has the best soft pretzel. Well now, they're making a cheese steak pretzel. That's right. 
a Philly cheesesteak on the inside, surrounded by those piping hot, fresh, chewy pretzels. This is as Philly as it gets. A cheesesteak and a pretzel? Incredible! How great are those guys over there? They've got their original pretzels, the cinnamon pretzels, the pretzel dogs, and the party trays. And now, the Philly cheese steak pretzel. Bring them for tailgating, watching a game with the boys, a barbecue, or even a kid's birthday party. Head over to the Philly Pretzel Factory for the all-new cheese steak pretzel. And remember, if it's not from the Philly Pretzel Factory, it's not a real pretzel. If you're having plumbing problems, heating problems, cooling problems, don't have an attack, call Bobby Mack. Bob McNamara Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling is located right here in Marple Township. For 29 years, you can call Bobby Mack, 610-496-6260, or visit their website for all your heating, cooling, and plumbing needs at bobmcnamaraplumbing.com. The wait is over, Delco. No more driving down to the city in that awful traffic just to get an authentic cheesesteak. Delco Steaks located in Bruma has the best farm fresh meat right from Chambersburg, PA. Their simple menu offers cheesesteaks, chicken cheesesteaks, charbroiled burgers, hot dogs, homemade chicken fingers, and the most delicious thin crinkle cut fries. Call today for delivery or pickup at 610-356-1192 and check out their menu online at DelcoSteaks.com. See why these guys were Philly Magazine's top pick for cheesesteak joints in all Philadelphia. Delco Steaks, you can't beat our meat. Adams Harley Davidson supports Marple Newtown Tigers football. Adams Harley Davidson, Media PA, 1011 Baltimore Pike. Adams Harley Davidson, Chad's Ford PA, 1241 Baltimore Pike. Adams in Summersville, Pennsylvania, 3255 State Road. Adams, Adams in Electric City, Harley Davidson, Scranton PA, 1834 Scranton Carbondale Highway. Adams Harley Davidson, Rawway, New Jersey, 12 West Milton Avenue. Demo rides every day. Full events calendar, hours, directions, and contact information. AdamsHD.com. Adam I'm Harley Davidson. Tiger Pride. If you suffer from back or neck pain, injury or headaches, then Dr. Tom Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center are here to help. Dr. Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center have been serving Delaware County residents for over 15 years. They take a gentle approach and utilize current techniques to help manage your pain. To address your back and neck related pain or injuries, call the Advanced Chiropractic Center today at 610-356-2300 or visit drtomgraziano.com and tell them the Tigers Radio Network sent you. Hey Tigers fans, did you know that only the Philly Pretzel Factory can make the Philadelphia Pretzel? Because they have authentic, genuine quality of a Philly Pretzel. They're always hot, always fresh, always a great deal. When I go to the Philly Pretzel Factory, I know I'm eating the original Philly soft pretzel. Bring them to a sporting event, a work party, even for a quick snack, and you can be sure that the Philly Pretzel Factory will deliver a pretzel of great taste and value. Stop in today at any of their locations, including Broomall, Springfield, Folsom, and Bryn Mawr. Or visit their website at phillypretzelfactory.com for a complete listing of locations in the Delaware Valley. And remember, if it's not from the Philly Pretzel Factory, it's not a real pretzel. Taking the lead in the tree care today is Mike Gillen at MG Tree. Mike is a resident of Brumo, a 1990 MN graduate, and was co-captain of the football team in 1990. Located in Brumo, MG Tree provides tree care to shaping and trimming or complete tree removal, not to mention a 24-hour emergency service. These experienced professionals are serving those in Delaware County and the main line. Keep your trees looking healthy and great. Give them a call for an appointment today at 610-359-9970. Again, 610-359-9970. Hannam's Harley-Davidson supports Marple Newtown Tigers football. Hannam's Harley-Davidson, Media PA, 1011 Baltimore Park. Hannam's Harley-Davidson, Chad's Ford PA, 1241 Baltimore Park. Hannam's in Summersville, Pennsylvania, 3255 State Road. Hannam's in Electric City, Harley-Davidson, Scranton, PA, 1834 Scranton Carbondale Highway. Hannam's Harley-Davidson, Rawway, New Jersey, 12 West Milton Avenue. Demo rides every day. Full events calendar, hours, directions, and contact information. Hannam's HD.com. Hannam's Harley-Davidson. Tiger Pride. 
Searching for a reliable heating and air conditioning company? Then DZO Mechanical is here to fulfill your every need. Privately owned, DZO offers residential and commercial services in heating, air conditioning, and ventilation. Since 2000, DZO has proudly served the Delaware County and Tri-State area, offering customers great service at fair rates. For a free estimate, call DZO at 484-454-3346 or online at www.dzomechanical.com. If you love Philadelphia sports and good food, then there's no better place to catch a game than Barnaby's of America in Havertown. Located off the Broomall Havertown exit of the Blue Route, Barnaby's is the place to be for the big game. You can enjoy dinner in their dining room or grab appetizers on the enclosed deck or even head downstairs for a night of dancing and arcade games. You can even book your next event at Barnaby's of America in Havertown and take advantage of their party specials. So for sports, food, and a great experience, stop by Barnaby's of America in Havertown today. Are you thinking of buying or selling your home? If that's the case, call Marple Newtown real estate expert Karen Garbett with the Karen Garbett Real Estate Team. Karen has over 55 star reviews on Zillow. She supports Marple Newtown High School football and goes the extra mile for you. In fact, a $500 donation will be made by her to the football team in your name for anyone who calls Karen and has their home bought or sold with her that goes to settlement. Want a good return on investment? Be sure to give Karen a call at 610-331-4546. The wait is over, Marple. The first bar since Prohibition has opened up in your backyard. Marple Public House, located at 31 North Sprawl Road in Broomall, is home to award-winning dishes, a 16-rotating tap system, top-shelf liquor, and an elegant but fun place to spend time with family and friends. See what all the hype is about. Check them out online at www.marple.pub and be sure to catch the radio crew in there after each Friday night game. Fidato Partners is a regional management consulting advisory and executive search firm with offices in Berwyn, Philadelphia, and New York City. Fidato Partners LLC helps companies navigate the challenges and complexities of today's ever-changing business landscape with expertise in technical accounting, system implementations, internal audit, finance transformation, and data management. We help global businesses solve their most critical finance, accounting, system, personnel, and data issues. Learn more at www.fidatopartners.com or reach out to Patrick McGowan. The Tigers Radio Network broadcasts, both live and archived, are the exclusive property of the Tigers Radio Network Incorporated and are produced for the private use of our listening audience. No rebroadcast, in full or in part, is permitted without the express written consent of the Tigers Radio Network Incorporated. Five, four, three, two, one. Two receivers, single back is Sapness. They hand off to him. He finds a hole. He's across the 20, 30, 40, 50. No one's going to catch him. Touchdown, Adrian Sapness. One play changes the game once again for Marple Newtown. It's going to be a play action over the middle. It's going to be bounced. One handed by Carmen Christiana. He's going to put him in motion, put him on the left side. He's going to be looking left. Marple Newtown McEwen applying pressure. That's Noah Turner. He's going to be a sack. It's going to be a handoff to Charlie Box on the far side, trying to get the corner. He does. Charlie Box, full steam ahead. There goes Charlie Box down the sideline. Charlie Box can do it all. Side. They fake it to him. They're actually going to roll. It's going to be deep down the field. The ferry over the shoulder catch. He's in for his fourth touchdown tonight. It's going to be a handoff to him. Up to gut. Makes one man miss. Still on his feet. Brian Jocelyn is going to score. Brian Jocelyn, 35 yards out. They're going to put Abel Hoff in motion. It's going to go that way. It's going to be a swing pass to Hoff. Who has the sideline. He's at the 50, the 40. He's got one man to beat. He cuts it back. He's at the 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Tigers. Roll to his right, come back to his left. It's a screen past the weather. He has a running lane. He's got the edge. He's going to break free. He's still on his feet. It's a chase to the end zone. And Weathers is going to get in for a Marple Newtown touchdown.
You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. Welcome back to halftime as there's three minutes until the second half action. Pencrest got a late field goal attempt, 14 to 3, but we'll go right to Eric. Eric on that penalty. I don't think much was happening. Yeah, Dave, uh, I've spent some time, you know, we've got this lovely replay here, and I spent some time looking at this slow-mo, and, you know, look, it's it's a bang-bang play. These refs are doing the best that they can, but at the end of the day, uh, what that call was, I, you know, again, I think it's missed. Again, I have the ability to sit here and... And, and, and look at replay. Yeah, I can Monday morning quarterback it all day long, <laughs> if you will. Um, yeah, but live action, but it looks like look, he flip-flops. Cage, Cage went up high. Uh, looks like he got pushed by the defender, and then just that motion was enough to flip him over. I mean, it was a rough hit. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, Cage came down hard on his head, um, right. and it looked worse than it was. But I, at no time did I see a Marple defender lead with his helmet. Looks like he just gave a push, and then that push was enough to give him a flip, like a big flip in the air. Um, and, you know, look, we're, it's a good thing that Cage didn't get hurt. I mean, it was a good a quick bang-bang play. Um, but, again... You know, we have the ability to sit here and, and review that in real time uh, after the play. And, you know, we'll, for those of you who are watching, we're going to show it again real, real quick and see if you can kind of pick up what judge. it was. But um, as, as a foresight official, though, when you see a guy go up in the air like that and come down, even if you didn't see anything, if there is a guy in the area, most of like are throwing that flag. Right. I, again, you know, this is high school athletics, so it's – they're doing the best that they can, and I'm sure that most folks don't have the you know have the luxury of doing what we're doing right now, which is kind of going back and reviewing those plays. But um, you know, all Let in alone all, live, right? Exactly. All in all, um, you know, Dave, what do you think? It's a pretty good uh, you know first half of football. Um, saw some some good things there. I think it was a tale of you know honestly those two costly turnovers by the Lions. Uh, you know, put Marple in good position and led to that 14-3 to lead. Right, Eric, as those interceptions really changed the outcome of the game because Marple Newtown was struggling. And you really didn't see a good Marple Newtown offense to begin this game right off the bat. It took a drive or two, and really it took the interception to be setting up to get Charlie Box and then get things in motion. But you can see towards the end of the first half, I think you're starting to see the real Dave Bertolini. I think you're starting to see a sophomore quarterback come into his own as Marple Newtown's produced quarterback after quarterback the last few years, as you got to find what he's good at. And he's just finding his rhythm because first he'll scramble. And he doesn't have that ability to, to scramble and just throw. So he's looking to scramble and take off. It's going to take some time, but he's starting to look confident, especially that back end zone throw. It was incomplete to McKee, but he made the throw. Look, Dave, I, I agree 100%. Now he's in his fourth game, and you know we've seen the maturation of this young man in these four games and you know this game he's starting to show that poise and the movement in the pocket less running tonight which I think has been a good thing for him um, but he's got some zip on the ball he's not afraid to put the ball in the air and, and, and put him in a challenging situation so uh, it's it's a good thing to see and it, it's, it's a bright future for uh, this this football team. It helps when you have number two in the in the backfield, especially Charlie Box, who has two touchdowns tonight, one from four, one from 26. Charlie? And Dave, as we talked about Marple's tough opponents the first couple weeks, they're rolling through the rest of the Central League. Strathaven leads Harridan 48-6 at halftime, and Garnet leads Upper Darby 49-12. to Woo! That, I, that, when those two meet, that's going to be uh, the game that's of the week. Be the game right there, guys. That's going to determine who wins the Central League for sure. Agreed. I believe that's coming up in three two two or three weeks sometime in october but that everybody's got that game circled because that will be a good one it probably lasts a whole 35 minutes between those two wing t offense <laughs> because you won't see much thrown in that one but for marple newtown you have to be happy for coach kicking you have the lead not probably outstanding about the late field goal because pancreas gets the ball to begin the second half but you'll take it yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, and again, like you, as you mentioned just a minute ago, look, the Tigers struggled early with running the ball, and you know, un undoubtedly, you know, they've got their, their their senior powerhouse in the back and Charlie, but they really struggled early on. And you know, luckily they were able to get uh, you know a couple of nice little runs there toward the end of that first half. Um, that nice 26 yarder that Charlie had up the gut there for that touchdown. And and looking forward to next week, Marble Newtown plays Haverford. They trail Ridley 21-7 at halftime. 
Ridley's looking like they're for real in the Central League. And we know Greg Pecco is very happy about that accomplishment right now. Maybe the green mystique is coming back. You never know. Perhaps. It's not good news for a Tigers fan, though, because Haverford will be coming off two straight losses. They did lose two weeks. They lost last week to Strathaven and lose this week. It was back-to-back -back games and potentially could get knocked out of playoff contention. Especially in 6A. You need, to, you need to almost run the table the rest of the year just to get in in Class 6A. Pancrest takes the field as they warm up. You got three minutes on the clock, and then we'll be back for second half action. Tigers lead 14 to 3. We'll step aside real quick. Coming up, Marple Newtown taking Pancrest. You're listening to Marple Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. If you suffer from back or neck pain, injury or headaches, then Dr. Tom Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center are here to help. Dr. Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center have been serving Delaware County residents for over 15 years. They take a gentle approach and utilize current techniques to help manage your pain. To address your back and neck related pain or injuries, call the Advanced Chiropractic Center today at 610-356-2300 or visit DrTomGraziano.com and tell them the Tigers Radio Network sent you. Oh man, the Philly Pretzel Factory has done it again. They took a Philly tradition and made it even better. Now you already know the Philly Pretzel Factory has the best soft pretzel. Well now, they're making a cheese steak pretzel. That's right, a Philly cheesesteak on the inside, surrounded by those piping hot, fresh, chewy pretzels. This is as Philly as it gets. A cheesesteak and a pretzel? Incredible! How great are those guys over there? They've got their original pretzels, the cinnamon pretzels, the pretzel dogs, and the party trays. And now, the Philly cheese steak pretzel. Bring them for tailgating, watching a game with the boys, a barbecue, or even a kid's birthday party. Head over to the Philly Pretzel Factory for the all-new cheese steak pretzel. And remember, if it's not from the Philly Pretzel Factory, it's not a real pretzel. If you're having plumbing problems, heating problems, cooling problems, don't have an attack, call Bobby Mack. Bob McNamara Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling is located right here in Marple Township for 29 years. You can call Bobby Mack, 610-496-6260, or visit their website for all your heating, cooling, and plumbing needs at bobmcnamaraplumbing.com. The wait is over, Delco. No more driving down to the city in that awful traffic just to get an authentic cheesesteak. Delco Steaks located in Brumahaz, the best farm fresh meat right from Chambersburg, PA. Their simple menu offers cheesesteaks, chicken cheesesteaks, charbroiled burgers, hot dogs, homemade chicken fingers, and the most delicious thin crinkle cut fries. Call today for delivery or pickup at 610-356-1192 and check out their menu online at DelcoSteaks.com. See why these guys were Philly Magazine's top pick for cheesesteak joints in all Philadelphia. Delco Steaks, you can't beat our meat. Adams Harley Davidson supports Marple Newtown Tigers football. Adams Harley Davidson Media PA, 1011 Baltimore Park. Adams Harley Davidson Chad Ford PA, 1241 Baltimore Park. Adams in Sellersville, Pennsylvania, 3255 State Road. Adams, Adams in Electric City, Harley Davidson Scranton PA, 1834 Scranton Carbondale Highway. Adams Harley Davidson, Rahway, New Jersey, 12 West Milton Avenue. Demo rides every day. Full events calendar, hours, directions, and contact information. AdamsHD.com. Adams Harley Davidson. Tiger Pride. If you suffer from back or neck pain, injury or headaches, then Dr. Tom Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center are here to help. Dr. Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center have been serving Delaware County residents for over 15 years. They take a gentle approach and utilize current techniques to help manage your pain. To address your back and neck related pain or injuries, call the Advanced Chiropractic Center today at 610-356-2300 or visit DrTomGraziano.com and tell them the Tigers Radio Network sent you. You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. Welcome back for second half action. Tigers lead 14 to 3. Charlie, real quick, what does Pencrest need to do to get back into this one? They need to get their quarterback in a rhythm. Short passes, intermediate, and then go long. You need to get them in some sort of rhythm. You need to establish the run game, too, and that sets that up as well. What do the Tigers need to sustain the lead? The Tigers need to, dis to in order to sustain the lead, the heavy Painted dose. Off to number two. Heavy dose of number two. 
<laughs> as John's getting ready to boot this second half underway. Tigers lead 14 to three. Pencrest will get the ball to begin the second half in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania, as the ball fell over. And Redo. Dave, Dave, another thing for Pencrest is when Marble Newtown has the ball, Eric, Eric McKee shouldn't see another single coverage the rest of the night. Make someone else beat you. It's a good strategy. John, to kick this one away, is a high kick. Returnable from the 16-yard line as the returner plows his way down to the 30. Couts on the return. Ball spotted at the 31-yard line. 11.55 here in the third is where we will start this one. And this is a huge drive, not just to cut into the deficit. Even if you can just put a field goal on the board, you cut it to a one-possession game, and that's why that field goal at the end of the first half was so important. But you said we haven't seen a sack yet. You gotta wait for that pressure because you know it's coming. See if Cantwell or Bosch and company come up with a big play. Cello. Burke back in the backfield, three wide receivers. Handoff goes to Burke off the far side. He's able to leave his mark as he piles his way down to the 34 gain of three. Win on the tackle from Marple Newtown. If you're Pencrush, you need to, to sustain that drive, right? You just want to put a few plays and take some clock off, let your defense breathe. It's not necessarily be necessarily about clock right now. They just got all of halftime to rest. You got to score points, even if it's just a field goal. Make it a one possession game. Trips formation on the far side. Cello. Burke goes in motion. Fakes to him. It's actually a counter back to the near side. He dashes way into nearly Marple Newtown territory down at the 49. Gain of 15, and he was shot out of a cannon. And after that first inside zone, you hit him with a counter with a pulling guard. Sprung him free. Nice play is, I believe that was Burke on the carry. First down and 10. Inside zone play kept by Cello. He's in the Marple Newtown territory. Down to the Marple Newtown 41-yard line. And this is what you're talking about. They're getting chunk plays. Good enough for another first down. I might, I might try and go a little bit of tempo here. Don't let him sub. As Pencrest defense was on the field the entire first half, maybe try and turn the table. Only matters about points, right? That's what you said as Marple Newtown's now on the ropes as it's first down and 10 from their own 41-yard line. Pencrest driving. Three wide receivers for Cello. Handoff goes to Burke along the far sideline. He's able to march his way towards the 35 marker, give him the 37, gain of four on the play. Win once again on the, on the play on the tackle. New wins have been all over the place to start the second half. As if you're familiar with watching the Dallas Cowboys, it's that strategy of grabbing and trying to take away two offensive linemen, set someone else up, try and make that tackle. Second down and seven. No more Dallas Cowboys talk, Charlie. It's gain of three on the play. Cello drops back the pass. Looking, looking. And he's able to weave his way for a positive gain. So he looked to his right, didn't see anybody open. Called his own number, pick up to 36, gets about two. And a good job to tuck it away, go down, not try and make anything special happen. Live the play another down, as they say. And here we go once again in no man's land. It's You got two downs to pick up that first. You got two downs here. Pun, punting is not an option at this point. They're down and manageable for Cello. Four wide receivers. Cello, design quarterback, run to the far side. He's got the first down and more as he's tackled out of bounds. They're going to mark him down at the 28. And, and a lot of running offenses, 
as a, playing defense, you got to watch that pulling guard. That pulling guard is the key to everything. He was the lead on the counter. He was the lead on that quarterback keeper. Now, Eric, real quick, fear does not exist in this dojo, right? That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. There's no fear in any dojo. Correct, Sensei. First down and 10 from the 28-yard line. Lions driving. Second place is no place. Cello. Handoff goes to Cout along the near side. Good job by Marple Newtown. Few players. You had Bosch and Small on the tackle. They give him a yard. Ball's about the 27. And if you if you can pick up another first down. You're in field goal. You're in field goal range to cut it, make it 14-6. But, but you're the, not thinking saying, what's three. The range? You're, you're, you're not thinking three though. You're thinking six. Four wide receivers for Cello. Drops back to pass. Looks to his right. It's a screen pass. Marble Newtown. That's grounding. He's gonna say incomplete. There was no one in the area. I, I don't. And, and the flag is dropped. He tried to throw it away. The screen pass was red. So if you're a quarterback, you're kind of... You got to throw it into the dirt, but you can't do it like that. You got to throw it almost at your receiver's feet. Intentional grounding. They're going to mark it off, I believe, from the 41-yard line. Also the 13. That marker is down, so he should be at the 40. So they're going to put it back to the 45. So I guess from the 40 to the 45, lost down and that's a game altering play. Absolute, absolutely, you go from thinking field goal range, maybe touchdown to now, you're gonna have to punt this ball most likely unless you can pick up a giant chunk play. Intentional ground, it makes it third down and 29. Cello? Trips formation on the far side. Counter play to the near side. Burke nowhere to go. A few Tigers. Bosch has been all over the field. Fourth down. Here comes the punting unit. Conroy and McKee are going to be back in punt return formation for Marple. And Kalt's coming out the punt for Pencrest. Just under 7.30 here in the third. Tigers looking to add to their 14-3 after the stop defensively. High snap. Cowan's able to bring it down. Boot this one. Fair caught by Marple Newtown. He waved the... We'll see. They mark him down at the 10, and that's where Marple Newtown's first drive of the second half will begin with 7.09 here for the Tigers. Your Marple Newtown, you wouldn't mind chewing up some clock here. No, get get a couple first downs. Flip the field position. If Pencrest may not have scored, but it's all thinking field position. You got him pinned down at their ten. Tigers come out under center from the ten yard line. Handoff goes to Charlie Box. Finds a crease, and he will be met by two Lions, Cello and company, and Burke. Ford Progress looks like it's in the game about gain of two. And Charlie, this is a preview of the Thanksgiving Day game matchup. It's a pretty good one so far. It's a pretty good one so far, and it's if my memory serves me correctly, that game's going to be here again as well. I believe so. Hey, Dave, I'll tell you, that Pencrest defense, they are just stacking the middle there and making it really difficult for Charlie tonight to go right up the middle. Hey, that's when he tossed it to the outside. Second down and eight. Bertolini under center. See if they go to the air. You got one on one on the outside for your wide receivers. Fake it. That's where Bertolini goes. He sees daylight in front of him, and Puckett's able to bring him down. 
That, Dave, that almost looked like a naked bootleg there. He wasn't even looking the throw. Puckett with another open field tackle. So we'll mark it after a five yard pickup at the 17 yard line. But like we said, he had one on one on the outside. Players gotta win their matchups. And if Pen Pencross can get off the field here, that would be huge. With the punts not being so great so far for either side, flip field position, get the ball about midfield. Trips formation on the far side. Handoff goes to Charlie Box, cuts free. He has a running lane. Here goes Charlie Box. It's at the 50. It's a foot race towards the end zone. One on one with Box. Cuts it back and he's tackled inside the 10. Charlie Box broke free. That could have been a touchdown from 70. That would have been an 83 yard touchdown. Instead, it's first down and goal. And I think Box is probably out of gas. And looking at both perspectives here, if you're Marple, you're going for the knockout punch right here. Pencrest's offense hasn't been very productive. You score, you make it a three possession game. It's almost over at this point. However, you hold them to a field goal here. It's still a two possession game. They're still hanging around. Box has a touchdown from four yards out, 26. Now he's looking to add for the hat trick from eight yards out. Bertolini, first down and goal from the eight. Hands it off to Charlie Box, looking for the hat trick, and he's met at the line of scrimmage after a gain of one. Player down on the field, timeout on the field. We'll step aside as well. Tigers lead 14 to three or 444 left in the third quarter. You listen to Marple Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. If you suffer from back or neck pain, injury or headaches, then Dr. Tom Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center are here to help. Dr. Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center have been serving Delaware County residents for over 15 years. They take a gentle approach and utilize current techniques to help manage your pain. To address your back and neck related pain or injuries, call the Advanced Chiropractic Center today at 610-356-2300 or visit DrTomGraziano.com and tell them the Tigers Radio Network sent you. If you're having plumbing problems, heating problems, cooling problems, don't have an attack, call Bobby Mack. Bob McNamara Plumbing, Heating and Cooling is located right here in Marple Township for 29 years. You can call Bobby Mack, 610-496-6260, or visit their website for all your heating, cooling, and plumbing needs at bobmcnamaraplumbing.com. The wait is over, Delco. No more driving down to the city in that awful traffic just to get an authentic cheesesteak. Delco Steaks located in Bruma has the best farm fresh meat right from Chambersburg, PA. Their simple menu offers cheesesteaks, chicken cheesesteaks, charbroiled burgers, hot dogs, homemade chicken fingers, and the most delicious thin crinkle cut fries. Call today for delivery or pickup at 610-356-1192 and check out their menu online at delcosteaks.com. See why these guys were Philly Magazine's top pick for cheesesteak joints in all Philadelphia. Delco Steaks, you can't beat our meat. You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. Welcome back as Marple Newtown's knocking on the door once again. Second down and goal from the seven-yard line. Charlie Box looking for the hat trick. And if I'm Coach Gicking, Pencrest is a stack in the middle almost every single play. I'd try and get a pulling guard on the outside, run, and as St. Addie's used to call, let's get that little 36 toss action going. Here we go. Second down and goal for Coach Gicking and Marple Newtown. Bertolini under center. S screen pass to Eric McKee. Gets past one. He's able to fight him off. Still chopping his feet. He's inside the five. And he plows his way down to the two. Gain of five. Good fight by the senior wide receiver. Dave, if you're a coach here, they actually you mark it, it down at the three. Is this two downs or are you kicking and making a two touchdown game? Nah, you go, you go, you go for the throat. You're down at the three. Here we go. 
Handoff goes to Charlie Box. Weaving his way past one. Does he have the hat trick? He does! Charlie Box from three yards out. That's the big boys up front doing it for Charlie Box. They ran to the line of scrimmage. And now you're putting Pencrest in a situation where they're going to have to throw most downs, where they're not comfortable. As some people saw what the Cardinals did to the Titans last week, they're a running offense. They want to run it 70, 80% of the time. When they get out of their comfort zone, bad things happen. Uh, Conroy Hold, John's kick is up, and it is good. Charlie Box now has eight touchdowns on the season, averaging two a game. Four minutes left here in the third, 21-3, Marple Newtown. He'll step aside, you'll listen to Marple Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. Taking the lead in the tree care today is Mike Gillen at MG Tree. Mike is a resident of Brumall, a 1990 MN graduate, and was co-captain of the football team in 1990. Located in Brumall, MG Tree provides tree care to shaping and trimming or complete tree removal, not to mention a 24-hour emergency service. These experienced professionals are serving those in Delaware County and the main line. Keep your trees looking healthy and great. Give them a call for an appointment today at 610-359-9970. Again, 610-359-9970. You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. Welcome back as Charlie Box caps off a drive that started all the way back at the 10-yard line. That was all Charlie Box. The big run capped off by Box's third touchdown of the game. And I think that's a preview of what you're going to see for the rest of this year. It's what you've seen already, and that's what's going to continue to happen. Box's eight touchdown of the season. As John kicks this one away, Tigers have a commanding 21-3 lead here in the third. Kickoff is returnable for the Lions as he goes down to a knee at the 5. I guess he gets up as O'Donnell gets popped at the 25-yard line. Flag flies. See what the penalty is. This is going to be a personal foul. So personal foul against Marple Newtown personal gives foul. the Lions a free 15 yards and great starting field position. Yeah, he jumped on the pile. 34 with the personal foul. So he jumped on the pile. That's a no-no. So this is going to Discipline. As they mark off 15 yards. This line drive will begin with 3.53 here in the third. Looking to get in the end zone for the first time tonight as the ball is now all the way down to the 30, I believe that's the 38 yard line. Now what do you do if your line is more of the same way you did last year? You just weren't able to cap it off? I think it's more of the same as the last drive. T time isn't exactly on your side, but at the same time you still got to move the ball down the field. And passing three times isn't going to do that. Cello, shotgun. Play action going over the middle. He had a wide open tended target. Number 18 drawn right up the scene. He was wide open. Gilmore. If he hits him in stride there, he might still be running. Second down and 10 after the incom incomplete pass to Gilmore. With 3.50 here in the third. Cello comes out. Three wide receivers. That was not nice and easy. Low snap. Calls his own number to the far side. Gets a good block. Past the 45. Down to the 46. Gain of nearly eight. And back in two down territory. You got two downs to get two, or three, more like three yards. Two and a half, three yards on two plays. Schumacher in on the tackle. Cello, pistol formation. That's Burke going in motion. 
Quarterback keeper still on his feet. He's dashing. There he goes. Cello shoestring tackle saved the touchdown. Down to, let's say, the Marple Newtown 32 yard line. If you're a Pancras, I think you've got to start hur hurrying up at this point. It's a three possession game, and they haven't really been able to stop the Tigers' rushing attack to this point. So I think you got to start picking it up. Injured player down on the field will step aside with 301 here left in the third, 21 to 3 Tigers. You're listening to Marple Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. Hey, Tiger fans, did you know that only the Philly Pretzel Factory can make the Philadelphia Pretzel? That's because they have authentic, genuine quality of a Philly Pretzel. They're always hot, always fresh, and always a great deal. When I go to the Philly Pretzel Factory, I know I'm eating the original Philly Soft Pretzel. Bring them to a sporting event, a work party, or just for a quick snack, and you can be sure that the Philly Pretzel Factory will deliver a pretzel of great taste and value. Stop in today at any of their locations, including Broomall, Springfield, Folsom, and Bryn Mawr. Or visit their website, phillypretzelfactory.com, for a complete listing of locations in the Delaware Valley. And remember, if it's not from the Philly Pretzel Factory, it's not a real pretzel. Welcome back as the ball's now spotted on the 32-yard line. Are you seeing a few play designs for Cello, and they seem to be capitalizing on them? They do. Is all the defensive linemen are almost going for Burke as they saw that inside zone the entire first half. Speaking no. of which, it's a keeper. Marple Newtown's number 55, Damian Bosch on the tackle. They were ready for it that time. Now, Eric, I see glimpses of Ebert and Bosch every once in a while. Do well, you I'll agree? You, yeah, I mean, he is. And tonight, I'll tell you what, how, how many times have we said Damian Bosch's name? It seems like every time the defense is out there, he's making, making the big stops. Damian Bosch tonight has eight tackles, Eric. A absolute beast tonight. I mean, to put him in the same com conversation as Ebert, it's, 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 you know, that's high praise for this young man, and uh, he's showing it tonight. That's why I said glimpses. <laughs> hey. Not everyone's a collegiate football player. I totally understand. <laughs> he's, he's showing us something tonight here. Absolutely. There's a player down on the field. We'll step aside real quick. You're listening to Marple Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. Adams Harley Davidson supports Marple Newtown Tigers football. Adams Harley Davidson Media PA 1011 Baltimore Pike. Adams Harley Davidson Chad's Ford PA 1241 Baltimore Pike. Adams in Summersville, Pennsylvania 3255 State Road. Adams in Electric City Harley Davidson Scranton PA 1534 Scranton Carbondale Highway. Adams Harley Davidson Rahway, New Jersey 12 West Milton Avenue. Demo rides every day. Full events calendar, hours, directions, and contact information. AdamsHD.com. Adams Harley Davidson Tiger Pride. You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. Welcome back. After the play by Bosch, loss of one second down and 11, 215 here in the third. Marple Newtown trying to get the ball back and make a statement to put this game away. Second down and 11 from the 33 yard line. Cello's under center. Play action. He rolls to his right. Looking to throw back to his left. He's able to elude. Launches it deep down the field in the double coverage. Cal was the intended target. Got away with the push as McKee is claiming for offensive pass interference. And Cal made the smart play. They're underthrown ball. Can't let him intercept it. You got to turn into a defender at that point. So third down and long. I almost thought that was a screen pass as he went back to his right. They ran, they've ran. they run that a couple times. So, big decision here. Do you just get a run, get pick up a few yards? Because it is four down territory. It's four down territory, and to get 12 yards, your passing game hasn't been very effective, so I think you got you got to put it in the air twice because if you run it and only pick up two to three yards, you're putting yourself at fourth and nine. Third down and 11 for Cello. Drops back to pass. Looking to his left. Stick up in the pocket, takes off. He has the first down marker. Scoots out of bounds. Wise play, doesn't take a hit. Move them chains. And as I kept saying, you gotta start playing for a little bit of tempo. If you're gonna score, you gotta try and score before this quarter ends. Because end of the quarter is almost like a free timeout as well. 
Gain of 12 down to the 21 yard line. Pancras continues this drive. Looking for their first touchdown of the evening. And you, you, as you say, you always got to go for six, but a field goal is not a bad thing either. It makes it a two possession game. Handoff goes to Burke along the far side. He's able to weave away for a few yards inside the 20. Sixteen yard line, give him five on the carry. Is Marple Newtown's defense been on the field for a while? Two wide receivers on the far side. One on one matchup on the near side. If he wants it. Cello. Win on the tackle, and he was met in the hole. Pancras looks like they have no sense of urgency to, to run a play when they're getting up to the line of scrimmage. It's almost Andy Reid-esque. So third down and short. I gotta think you, you call Cheller's number again, right? I think they're they're starting to the key because on the read option, the ends aren't crashing anymore, so it's leaving the middle a bit open. So I think you're going to see Burke. They're down and short. With nine men in the box, so it's going to be tough either way. The jump pass up in the air, incomplete. So the handoff goes to Burke, who passes it to his intended target. Is that Cage along the far side, Charlie? That was Calton, who was intended for Intended for a count. Incomplete. A little jump pass action. A little trickery by the Lions. Tigers weren't fooled, though. I got to think you're going to cage. You, you got to trust your senior on the outside. He's got. I know he has McKee following him around, but... I, I think you spread him out, put the ball on the ground. What? Fourth down and three for Cello and the Lions from the 14 yard line. They got on the jump. I don't know. There are two players that moved at the same time. You either called on the Marple Newtown defense alignment or you called on the tailback who moved. And it's going to be encroachment against Marple Newtown. So that picks up the first down. As we said, Dave, discipline. The nine, nine yard line. First down and goal for the Lions. As there's 14 seconds left here in the third. First and goal from the nine, so Pencrest cannot get another first down. Three wide receivers for Cello. See if they go to Burke. Marple Newtown showing pressure. Runs to his left, lost it into the flat. It's complete. Cello into the end zone to Kalt. Touchdown, nine yard touchdown pass from Cello to Kalt. And the kicker's coming out here, but I think they should be going for two here. Explain why. Cut, you cut it to a 10, 10 point game. That way, if you kick a field goal, you make it a one touchdown game to make where you would make it 21 14. And then you don't have to do the two-point conversion later. That way you know what you're dealing with compared to putting potentially a game on the line for a two-point conversion later. Gavin Ray in the kick the extra point. It's up and it's no good. So there you go, Charlie. That's a big difference in this one. 21-9, to nine, eight seconds left here in the third. Well, step aside. You're listening to Marple Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. If you love Philadelphia sports and good food, then there's no better place to catch a game than Barnaby's of America in Havertown. Located off the Broomall Havertown exit of the Blue Route, Barnaby's is the place to be for the big game. You can enjoy dinner in their dining room or grab appetizers on the enclosed deck or even head downstairs for a night of dancing and arcade games. You can even book your next event at Barnaby's of America in Havertown and take advantage of their party specials. 
So for sports, food, and a great experience, stop by Barnaby's of America in Havertown today. You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. Welcome back as there should be about one more play left until the end of the third quarter. Pencrest drove down the field, began at the 38-yard line, went in the Marple Newtown territory, punched in a touchdown, cello the cow in the flat for nine yards out, and we got ourselves a ball game, but the extra point was no good, and that's a big difference in this one. It's 21 to nine, eight seconds left. As we prepare for the last play, most likely, of the third quarter. As we'll see who Pencrest is kicking this one away. They, they have a few different kickers, right, Charlie? They do have a few different kickers. And Marple's waiting for some sort of onside kick or squib kick. They got everyone lined up at midfield. And it was almost like a squib kick as it is returned at the 35-yard line by Marple Newtown's 26, I believe that is Paul DeFruscio. Big player tonight with the interception and the pass breakup in the end zone. So, one more play until the end of the third. Six seconds as only two ticks fell off the clock on that kick return. Ball spotted at the 32-yard line. Put, put the ball on the ground here. Get into the fourth quarter. Let's mark it at the 33-yard line. Bertolini, trip formation on the far side. Handoff goes to Charlie Box. Spin move applied. He's tackled at the 39-yard line. Gain of six. And we'll head to the fourth. Tigers lead 21-9. Don't go anywhere. Tigers lead 21-9. Fourth quarter action coming at you. You're listening to Marple Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. Searching for a reliable heating and air conditioning company? Then DZO Mechanical is here to fulfill your every need. Privately owned, DZO offers residential and commercial services in heating, air conditioning, and ventilation. Since 2000, DZO has proudly served the Delaware County and Tri-State area, offering customers great service at fair rates. For a free estimate, call DZO at 484-454-3346 or online at www.dzomechanical.com. You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. Welcome back for fourth quarter action. Marple Newtown looking to get on the board once again. Charlie Box has three touchdowns for the Tigers, all counting for all three scores. One from four yards out, one from 26, and most recently three yards. Charlie Box on the night, courtesy of Tommy Peel, has 20 carries for 178 yards and three touchdowns. Woo! That is a dandy, and he's looking to hit the 200 mark as well. It's hard to bottle up number two. It is, even with nine men in the box, which they've been doing a lot. <laughs> Nobody said it was easy. As we'll see if they go play action over the top on it, because that's how you can capitalize. But Charlie Box, 20 carries tonight. Sounds about right. Bertolini, shotgun formation. Play action, it's hit in the flat to Mike Schumacher. Great open field tackle. I believe that was number 19 on the tackle in the flat. 18, excuse me. None other than Gilmore. They're trying to use that flat, but nothing seems to be materialized. It, it helped in that first drive to get momentum, but going back to it, nothing doing. And Dave, here comes the biggest play of the game right now. If you had a yard or two, it's four downs, you go for it. If they can force a negative play, you're making Marple punt. From the 41-yard line, they need a few. Bertolini under center. Handoff goes to Charlie Box. Lowers his shoulder. Moves those chains. <laughs> to the 44-yard line. Give him three. And Marble's been running the ball pretty steadily the entire game, but now this is when you start to milk that clock. 
Move them chains. Sophomore quarterback under center. Under 11. Play action. Rolls to his left. Looking for the deep shot. Calls his own number. Weaving his way past one. He's down at midfield. Gain of six. And Dave McKee was wide open, streaking towards the end zone down the seam if he saw. We've seen that a few times where maybe he just doesn't have the time to throw him or he's just on the run. He's more concerned about getting hit. A lot of things go through your mind when you're getting chased as the quarterback. Definitely. It's tough to make a throw on the run, especially as a sophomore. So ball's at midfield. Bertolini under center. Box the back. Ball at midfield. Play action. Looking, looking. Nothing's there. And he just tells this guy to take off. And that's what happens. He gets a sack. To Cal. Sack by Cal. Throw it away. No one's there. Toss the ball away. That's that's one of his few mistakes that he's made tonight. You got to get throw the ball away, throw it out of bounds. This, going through his mind too, just go. You know what? I don't want the chains to stop. Maybe? And that's one of those things that'll come up on the stat sheet as a sack. That was not on the offensive line. That's completely on the quarterback. So you're saying that's a coverage sack? That's a coverage sack. I don't understand why you're not handing the ball off the box though. But all right. So now it's back down to third down and 10. Four wide receivers. McKee goes in motion to the far side. The screen pass to Charlie Box. Makes count miss. Now lowers his shoulder. Scoots out of bounds to the 46. So now it's fourth down and manageable. Hmm. That's another scenario where you got to stay in bounds, keep that clock running. Now, does coach think outside of the box, or you just feed number two? You, you just feed number two, but you ought to punt right now. If you do anything other than punt, it's a complete mistake. The You're in your own territory. Coach Gicking's going to go for it. Jim and Eric, this reminds me a lot of a certain District 1 playoff game against Unionville on their first drive. Fourth down, eight yards to go. It sure does. Bertolini getting the call from the sideline. And they'll talk this one over, see if common sense comes to the Marble Newtown sideline with 9.03 left here in the fourth. 21 to 9 Tigers. Step aside, you listen to Marple Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. Are you thinking of buying or selling your home? If that's the case, call Marple Newtown real estate expert Karen Garbett with the Karen Garbett Real Estate Team. Karen has over 55 star reviews on Zillow. She supports Marple Newtown High School football and goes the extra mile for you. In fact, the $500 donation will be made by her to the football team in your name for anyone who calls Karen and has their home bought or sold with her that goes to settlement. Want a good return on investment? Be sure to give Karen a call at 610-331-4546. You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. Welcome back as fourth down and eight, 9.03. I know you said to punt it, though, Charlie. But if you are going to do the Steve Reynolds, let's go for it, chuck up a Hail Mary, what are you calling? I'm... I, I've been clamoring for empty sets the entire game because I think Pancras would struggle in coverage. So I'd go empty. I think you obviously got to have someone going deep, a crosser, and you have someone leaking out across the other side. Here we go. Fourth down and eight. And common sense has not come to the Marple Newtown sideline. Bertolini puts small emotion to the near side. It's a play action to him as he's looking. He's taking off, and Cal is going to come up with the sack. Unbelievable turnover on downs. 8.55 turnover on downs. It looks like he was trying to do a wheel route to box on the backside. He was open, but he didn't have time to throw it. Punt the ball. Dave, that kind of reminded me of Adam Gase with the Jets last year. <laughs> 
Oh, please don't compare anything to the Jets. Oh, geez. As turnover on downs gives the Lions great field position at the 43-yard line. Hey, Dave, it's really hard to understand that play call. I, I just, at this point in the game. Just hand it off to two, then, if you're going to go to the right. near why, side. I mean, why would we go this route? Either punt the ball or give it to the best player on the team. I, I don't get it. I don't either. 8.55 to begin this drive. Down the middle, Cal he hopped it. Incomplete. As Cello had him as it skipped. He's claiming he caught it, that was, but we both know it bounced. If, I, if, I, if everyone's seen the movie Friday Night Lights, that was reminiscent of the ball bouncing when they picked up the first down. The receiver came down with it. He's trying to bait the official into giving them the catch. We had the luxury of instant replay, but we didn't need it on that one. Second down and 10. It's not like Charlie Box is almost 200 yards of rushing tonight. What's another carry? Second down and 10, 8.51 here in the fourth. Tigers lead 21 to 9. Touchdown right here by the Lions. Puts them right back in striking distance. Not, not to mention over seven yards of carry. Quarterback design keeper. Bosch on the tackle. Leans forward down to the 38 yard line. Double digit tackles tonight for the senior defensive end. So they put the ball at the 39 yard line. Got two downs, third down and six. Touchdown puts you right back in this game. It definitely does and they still got all three timeouts. Over eight minutes of clock left. But it's a two touchdown game though because of that missed extra point. Cello has three wide receivers. The up back. Burke goes in motion to his left hip. Keeper now looking to pass. Nothing doing. Escapes. Looking towards the sideline. He has the first down marker. Cello is able to get out of a sack, run along the Pancrest sideline, and move those chains. Tremendous performance by him. Eric is on the replay. He was able to get out of that sack and run along that sideline. Yeah, he really uh, looked like Houdini out there on that one. He scrambled around. He had three defenders that were within grasp, and he just got out of it. So uh, Dave, they're marking him out there. of bounds. They have the marker set as third down. Interesting. So they mark him down at the 35-yard line. Third down and a few yards to go. They're going to have to burn a timeout here as the offense looks confused. What? As they're talking about this one now. So it is fourth down. As they're trying to sort this one through. So I thought he, so he apparently stepped out of bounds, Charlie. And Eric pointed out as well, Eric, he got yeah, out I mean, of bounds. So it's going to be fourth down and short. I mean, the side judge was right there. I mean, so he was, that looked like he was definitely out. It's always this, this is how it is with Jerry. Fifth down, Jerry. It's kind of hard to say if he was out really at the 35. We may have to go into the New York office on this one and figure it out. But no, it looks like he was definitely out of bounds. Side judge was right there. Did so, these guys not call. know what the down is? Come on, fellas. I think we're well, going to have to call in Mike Pereira here. Maybe we can go to the fifth down on this one. We have before, Eric. Fifth down, Jerry's out there. So let's see what happens. Uh, I'd love to know what Steve Reynolds' input is right now. He's probably canatonic. Probably. <laughs> well, some of these officials might be as well, Eric. As Here we go. Fourth down and short. If we ever get this one underway. Here we go. And if you're a Pancrest here, this is where this has to be your money play. This is the game if they don't convert here. This has to be the best play in your playbook, your money play. A few yards to go for Pancrest. I think you do a design keeper. He's been utilizing it all game and been effective. Cello. And that's exactly what it is. He bounces it to the outside. He dives at the sticks. It's the ball comes out. They're going to mark him as a first down. Mm -hmm. 
Waiting for the official call, though. There's a player There's down. There's a player down. We'll step aside real quick. You're listening to Marple Newtown Football and Tigers Radio Network. The wait is over, Marple. The first bar since Prohibition has opened up in your backyard. Marple Public House, located at 31 North Sprawl Road in Broomall, is home to award-winning dishes, a 16-rotating tap system, top-shelf liquor, and an elegant but fun place to spend time with family and friends. See what all the hype is about. Check them out online at www.marple.pub and be sure to catch the radio crew in there after each Friday night game. Fidato Partners is a regional management consulting advisory and executive search firm with offices in Berwyn, Philadelphia, and New York City. Fidato Partners LLC helps companies navigate the challenges and complexities of today's ever-changing business landscape with expertise in technical accounting, system implementations, internal audit, finance transformation, and data management. We help global businesses solve their most critical finance, accounting, system, personnel, and data issues. Learn more at www.fidatopartners.com or reach out to Patrick McGowan. You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. After the first down play, that extends this drive with 7.25 here in the fourth quarter. Lions looking to add another first down to move those sticks. Handoff goes to the tailback. Nothing doing for him. Marple Newtown's Haggerty and company in on the tackle as Count was able to pick up one. And everyone on that defense is starting to creep up more and more every single play as that rushing attack's coming back alive, especially with Cello on those keepers. I actually call it no gain. So nice play by Haggerty. O'Donnell's been busy on the outside all night. Look for his number. That's very true, too. Second down and 10. Cello. Count the back. Everybody jumped. We'll see what the official call is. Looked like the tackle moved first. Dead ball, illegal procedure against Pancrest. Backs them up five yards. So that's the first time really this game we've seen that backfire utilizing the hard count. That's where that discipline comes in. You gotta get the other guy to jump. Second down and 15. Second and 15 for the Lions. 6'20, 6'19, 6'18 here in the fourth quarter. I'm Dave DePasqua alongside Charlie DePasqua. Eric Kelling, Jim Alsman, and the rest of the TRN in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania for the Central League matchup. Cal goes on Cello's left hip. Rolls to his right, comes back to his left, design screen pass. He's got Lyman deep down the field. He's got to take off. Pointing towards the end zone, throwing deep down the field. He's got his man. Inside the five. And that was just a but backyard scramble coming, drill. But this one's coming back. He had Lyman all the way down to the 20. And Dave, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that a loss of down? I believe so. An eligible man downfield. So that's why I said during the broadcast he had to, he had to take off and run because... He had, he had Lyman on the screen pass, and if the screen doesn't work, you either got to throw it into the dirt or run because you the, the play is broken. Right? You're 100% correct. And scr scramble drills only work if it's within a certain amount of time. After six, seven, eight seconds, all those linemen are down the field, and you have no other choice. Got it. So back them. Puts the ball all the way back to the Marple Newtown 42 yard line. Second down and long for Cello. Count the back. Drops back the pass. Looking, looking, looking to throw deep down the field. He's got two guys in the area. Oh, nearly went to the far side wide receiver. He was open. I believe that's Gilmar along that far sideline. 
excuse me, that's 11 of Pencrest. Daniel Dada. Third down and long, but if you look on that replay, Eric, that was great pass protection. It was fantastic. I mean, the, the rush was coming. It got picked up, and he had time to move around the pocket. Uh, I mean, he just overthrew his guy right there, but that was... Um, That's textbook. Boy. Yeah, it was fantastic. Third down and long. 5.08 left here in the fourth. Tigers lead. Truffin looking to stuff this line's attack. Cello. He has pressure in his face. Spin move is applied. Throwing it deep down the field. Broken up and out of the outstretched arms of a diving wide receiver. 18, 15 to 18. There was a bunch of different wide receivers. Charlie, you see a bunch of different guys in the area. I don't know if that's because of the scramble drill or just the route, but you're seeing two guys in the same area. That one looked more like a scramble to me. With There's pressure coming off that edge most plays, and when he has to roll out to the left, it's just throwing the ball up at that point. They're punting this one away? That's interesting. Okay. Cal in the punt this one away. This is making me scratch my head, Dave. As the punt is high end over end. Kicked out of bounds. No return. I understand you got all three timeouts left and it's fourth down and long, but don't you just heave it one more time? You have to heave it one more time. There's been some interesting calls to this one. E even if you can get a three and out, I don't think Pencrest's offense is capable of scoring two touchdowns in under five minutes. So they are going to put the ball, I don't know about that one, but beautiful punt puts Marple Newtown at their own 10-yard line. 4.52 to begin this drive. Let's we'll see if Coach Gicken elects to put the ball in the air, Jim. That just shows you the different philosophies of coaching staff, Steve. One won't go trailing by two touchdowns at the opposing 45, and one up by two touchdowns will go for it on his own 40. Handoff goes to the tailback. He's able to weave his way down to the 15. Box picks up five. You go have to think outside the box. It's simple. Just hand it off to Charlie. He'll do the rest of the way. It's very simple. Put the ball in your best player's hands. It's at 186. Bertolini under center. That was a blatant false start by the up back that they did not see until now. So there you go. Illegal procedure against Marple Newtown. All these trappers say false start. That's Sunday. Second down and 10 now, because that negates the five yard carry by a box. <laughs> Her Steve Reynolds is having fun at his wedding. Second down and 10, he's missing a good one. Second down and 10 from the 10. Bertolini under center. Handoff goes to Charlie Box. Makes one man miss. Takes another one for a ride. And he's able to pick up that penalty yardage back to the 15. Third down and five. And I'm, I'm surprised Pencrest isn't burning their timeouts right now. He punted the ball for a reason. Now he's got to call him. I guess you just hope here you get a stop. I don't know. I'm not the coach. That's why I don't get paid the big bucks. That's Bogan checking in the quarterback position. If, if I know Coach Gicking well enough, I think this ball is going in the air. Trips formation to the far side, but Charlie boxes the back, so let's see what happens. He's waiting for the back judge to start signaling. Come on, fellas. They're just going to take a timeout. 
249 here. We'll step aside. 21 to 9 Tigers. Listen to Marble Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. If you suffer from back or neck pain, injury or headaches, then Dr. Tom Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center are here to help. Dr. Graziano and the Advanced Chiropractic Center have been serving Delaware County residents for over 15 years. They take a gentle approach and utilize current techniques to help manage your pain. To address your back and neck related pain or injuries, call the Advanced Chiropractic Center today at 610-356-2300 or visit drtomgraziano.com and tell them the Tigers Radio Network sent you. If you're having plumbing problems, heating problems, cooling problems, don't have an attack, call Bobby Mack. Bob McNamara Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling is located right here in Marple Township for 29 years. You can call Bobby. You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. Welcome back as it's third down and five, 249. A first down pretty much does this one, Charlie. Yeah, first down will do it. Regardless of run or pass. We'll see if Charlie Box is utilized as the receiver or running back on this play. I think we both know the answer to that, Dave. Box the back. Third down and five from the 15. Handoff goes to Charlie Box on the far side. Finds a crease. Cal on the tackle. First down, Marple Newtown. Coach Gicking doing the sensible thing and running the ball. Magical things happen when you run the ball. The fans head for the exits. As Pencrest will start to burn. The official call. A legal procedure. Big call. Changes the run to a negative now. So just wipe out that play. It's third down and 10. As the refs alter this one. So the legal procedure makes it third down and 10. Back to the 10 yard line. And away we go. So maybe he does put this one in the air. Pancrush is just leaving all three of their timeouts in their back pocket. Play action. Bertolini looking. He's got daylight. He's knocked out of bounds. And there you go. That's going to be a personal foul against Pencrest. And even though he already, do had, well, he already had the first down off the run. Now the fans head for the exits. Great crowd here in Marple Newtown High School, as it was an orange out. So they're going to say that was a blow to the head against Marple Newtown? Eric, we need a replay on that one. Any idea? I, I believe they're going to call it on Bertolini maybe lowering his head. It wasn't Bertolini. That was Bogan in the game. Um, I, well, there was, no, there was no helmet contact at all. It was a shoulder contact. And again, once again, bang, bang, play. Shoulder, head, I, they're both in the upper body. Guys, let's just wrap this game up. Come on, refs. I don't know what these guys are doing tonight. Now they're going to take a timeout. I believe it's, I believe it's Pencrest taking a timeout. We'll keep it here real quick. Eric? There, there, I don't know, there's been an assortment of penalties on that one, but I couldn't tell you about the replay. I, I mean, the last three minutes of this game have taken two hours. It's ridiculous. These guys, they're... Their calls are bad. I don't know what's going on tonight. Maybe you know. Maybe it's dark out. They can't see anything anymore. I'm, I'm at a loss. Jim's got an extra pair of glasses. Right. Can bar maybe them. we'll give him Jim's bifocals and he can take them down and take a look. I, hey, Eric, I hope they're not driving home in this dark. I, I, right? I mean, <laughs> look, they're they're probably in the same state that Steve Reynolds is in right now at a wedding. He's probably uh, slurring his words. <laughs> now it looks like they're confused, but. Uh, on that last call, I don't get it. I mean, I can look at the replay. It, there was no helmet to helmet contact there that they called. It was a shoulder. But uh, look, let's just, uh, we need to get this thing wrapped up. So they're coming back on the field for about the third down, and it's third and seven. 
from the 13 yard line. Third and seven. So it's third down and seven after the penalty. And this is about the third or fourth time. However, the clock they're is stuck, running after Pancras called timeout. Uh, they ran it. Here we go. Handoff goes to Charlie Box. Short by a few yards. Two on the tackle. Now here's a timeout by Pancrest. So they're going to talk this one over. It's fourth down. They're going to go for it. because uh, We'll see what they mark it. 19 yard line. <laughs> well, you need an inch. You do a quarterback sneak. Or you can hand the ball to number two. Eric? Eric, you would definitely go for it here, right? Uh, As in throw it? Look, uh, I mean, look, a minute 45. Yeah, you got to go. You got to go. Put the big package in, get Charlie behind him, and just push, push, push. You got to do it here. Because, look, we get a first down here, the game's going to be over. It's, it's that simple. We need, we need to put this one away. So the ball's at the 19. They need about an inch and a half to pick up the first down. Fans still clearing out as they head for the exits. Tigers have a 21 to nine lead. Okay. Now, my question for you, do you go Charlie Box up the gut? Or everybody's gonna crowd that inside circle, toss it to the outside? Uh, you can't risk the eye formation, quarterback They're under actually gonna center. punt it, Never mind. Wow. Didn't see that coming. 12. John, they kicked this one away. Fourth down and one. Not the prettiest punt in the world. As it will roll to the Marple Newtown 34-yard line with a minute 35 remaining. Pancras is 95 seconds, one timeout. They got a score, onside kick, and score to win this game. Marple's probably going to sit back and prevent, as we said earlier, the Jim Schwartz defense. All of our favorites. Hey, you never know. Go for that one more interception. Ice is it? First and ten from the 34-yard line of Marble Newtown. Cello? I wonder if he plays the cello. I don't think so, Dave. <laughs> Drops back to pass. Quick toss. I believe that was batted down at the line of scrimmage. Yes, it was. Pass break up 55. Bosch all over the place. So on that instant replay, check out Bosch getting some hops, getting his hands up. Right, Eric? Yep. He came off the outside and he just he got his hands up right in the lane. Look at that. Just he sat, actually sat came back, back and sat. Sat back and just waited for that it to come. That is a to senior him. veteran move. Jim throwing out Devon Curse. Now that's uh, dating some people. Former Eagle. Second down and 10, a minute 31 left here in the fourth. Cello, drops back to pass. Looking, looking, it's a give and go. Beautiful throw and ball, up for grabs, diving reception, flag. Are they gonna say it's a catch or not? He did not come down with it, I don't believe, because it would have been a touchdown. That was a beautifully thrown football. An incomplete pass. Let's we'll see what the official call is. PI 15 yards in high school, Dave? Let's we'll see what the call is. That was a beautifully thrown football. Absolutely his best throw of the night. In that same spot as earlier. Well, Waiting an official call. That referee doesn't inspire confidence. Nah. Pass interference against Marple Newtown. Oh, these last couple minutes are taking forever. What's the over under? As it's a, the, the 19 yard line. The gamblers of this world would call it a back door cover. First down and 10 after the pass interference. Let's run that clock. Here we go. Cello. From the 19. He's got four wide receivers. 
Dashing to the left side, he's met by Bosch. He gets around him, complete to his target. No, dropped. dropped. P15, 23? 23 on the target. 23. 23. That is Matt Greenlaw. Second down and 10. Second and 10. Minute 16 left. Four wide receivers. Cello. Count the back. Drops back to pass. Looking, looking, wind causing pressure. Pushing him out of bounds is none other than Damian Bosch. But the unsung hero of the game has been Win, the big fella in the middle, forcing pressure, bouncing him to the outside. And fourth down coming up for Pencrest. Here's the ball game. So they're going to call it a loss. That's a sack for Bosch at the 23 yard line. What do you what do you draw up, Charlie? Screen? Those pass rushers are just teeing off now. It's got it's got to go in the air. Man goes in motion to the near side. This is the first time we've seen motion from them tonight. Rolling that way, looking, looking. Has a guy in his flat. It's gonna take off. Call his own number. Tackled All inbounds. Tackle Short. Tackled by Cantwell. Fourth down, and ball game coming up. And the clock's running, too. So decision time if you're Pencrest. Timeout. Pencrest, I believe that's their last one. We'll step aside one more time as well. 21-9, to 9, 48 seconds left. You're listening to Marple Newtown Football on the Tigers Radio Network. Adams Harley Davidson supports Marple Newtown Tigers football. Adams Harley Davidson Media PA 1011 Baltimore Pike. Adams Harley Davidson Chad Ford PA 1241 Baltimore Pike. Adams in Summersville, Pennsylvania 3255 State Road. Adams in Electric City Harley Davidson Scranton PA 1534 Scranton Carbondale Highway. Adams Harley Davidson Rahway, New Jersey 12 West Milton Avenue. Demo rides every day. Full events calendar, hours, directions, and contact information. AdamsHD.com. Adams Harley Davidson Tiger Pride. You're listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. Welcome back. 48 seconds left. Fourth down and nine yards to go. Here we go. Damian Bosch has been the defensive player of the game with the win up front. There's been two interceptions by the Tigers trying to ice this game. Cello. Four wide receivers. Back goes in motion. Drops back to pass. Looking, looking. Here comes Damian Bosch. Excuse me. That is Matt Cantwell with the icing on the cake. And that will about do it. A knee. Need about two knees, and that will ice the game. Charlie, Pancrest fought the entire way. They did fight the entire way, but Dave, are you sure we're going to kneel it here? Guess we'll find out. To remind folks, Marple Newtown will be home next week. They'll play Haverford coming off, I believe you said, a loss to Ridley. 45-21 loss to Ridley. Tigers take a knee. They'll need to take one more, I believe. And that will end it. They're shaking hands. Are they gonna call this one or are they gonna take another knee? That will do it. 
Next week, the Marple Newtown Tigers will play Haver. Here we'll have full coverage for you. You can read more about this game, get coverage of the entire 2021 season, listen or watch an archive of this or any of our broadcasts at MarpleNewtownFootball.com. Follow us on Twitter and on Instagram using at Tigers. Color Commerce today doing a great job in his first game, Charlie DePasqua, Engineer and Director, Eric Kelling, Co-Executive Producer, Greg Pecco, Community Outreach Director, Sammy Snyderman. Social media tonight, courtesy of Jim Allsman. Statistician, Tommy Peel tonight. Thank you for your help. Camera Operator is Jeff DiTrulio of Active Image Media. Marple Newtown Boosters Club, Mary Ellen Box. Athletic Director of Marple Newtown is Chris Gicking. Legal Services provided by Philip Kress. Esquire of Northtown, Pennsylvania. Clock operator tonight was Terry Spratt. Executive producer, Jim Allsman. For everyone, I'm Dave the Pascal for the entire broadcast crew. Thank you for watching and listening to the Tigers Radio Network on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. See you next week. Thank you for listening to the Tigers Radio Network. Heard exclusively on MarpleNewtownFootball.com. Be sure to follow us online at MarpleNewtownFootball.com and on Twitter and Instagram at MNTigers. The Tigers Radio Network broadcasts, both live and archived, are the exclusive property of the Tigers Radio Network Incorporated and are produced for the private use of our listening audience. No rebroadcast in full or in part is permitted without the express written consent of the Tigers Radio Network Incorporated. The Marble Newtown Football Boosters Club and the Tigers Radio Network appreciate your listenership. Go Tigers!